Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Playback. <laughs> Ain't that what they used to do? Welcome back, Playback. <laughs> yes, sir. We back. Right, team stand up. Um, to another episode of the Let's Keep It a Buck podcast. The only podcast where we seek to do things differently every single time. Every single time. That's a fact. Twice on Sundays. It's in it's in the works. <laughs> Y'all are gonna see. Oh, it's been two or three times we haven't done anything different. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh. You triggered my trap card. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it's gonna be. You triggered my I play trap. I play post podcast meeting face down and end my turn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you have no idea. Yeah. Oh, the Michael Jackson laugh. I got the guys here with me. Damo, how you doing today? Um, nifty, spiffy. Uh, great. A great day. Great day of content. Shout out everybody that pulled up to the me debating a pack of wolves over on Mookie's channel. That was pretty fun. Everybody in the stream earlier. Did you win? Um, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't know what the fuck happened. That was the most disorganized batch of gobbledygook I ever heard. I thought I won, but uh. Yeah, I don't know. So what, like, what was it about? Was it about the nineties? Yes, uh, they were upset. I was done with the nineties. I got called a bronze sexual. I got called a couple other things that I can't put the vod up because of. Um, yeah, it was for the nineties. Over yeah. LeBron? Oh yeah, they just assumed because I said I'm done with the nineties, I'm automatically boosting Bron. I was ready to start boosting Wimby and Pablo. They got mad. They told me, uh, "No, this is the one that got them." They said, "Name a guy in the current era." That it named 10 all-time defenders in the current era. So guys that could be deemed all-time defenders that currently play. And I'm like, uh, you gonna give me a sec. I gotta, I can't, I don't just got this off the top of my head. See, he don't know basketball. You can't name 10 off the top of your head right now. Are you serious? <laughs> Who is this guy? I'm like, I think that's not just something I walk around with. I they start naming things. Defenders, yes, name <laughs> 10 guys with a case to be all-time defenders. <laughs> Now, how long did it take you to, to name a name, though? I ain't gonna lie. At some point, it's like, damn, just, just say. I named three. I, I named three, and then niggas got niggas. I, I named two and a half, and then niggas got hot. Because that is hard. It's always the third All name. Time. They'll, they'll, yeah, I, I can tell you how he did it. I know how Domo did it. Mm -hmm. He said Draymond, he said Rudy, and then Wimby is where they lost it. Oh, uh, no, actually, you're close, though. You're close, though. You're close, though. Yeah. I said, who did I say? I want to say, I said Giannis. Okay. I said Wimby second. <laughs> and then niggas like Wimby. I'm like, yeah, yeah, Wimby. No way. I'm like, no, I got Wimby. And I'm like, third guy. Uh, how far can I? Then I start asking questions. I'm like, how far can I go back? What's considered current era? Because I don't want to go back reaching for guys and y'all niggas yeah, get mad. I don't wrong, throw yeah. yeah, I don't want to start throwing out Mark Gasols or Gasols or whatever it is. And you niggas get mad that's at probably me. Ten. So, you Kawhi, right? Yeah, there's 10. There's 10. Oh, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. But, There's but definitely still, that's all I asked. That's all I asked. And then they start. Oh, what about your guy, huh? AD. Wait, you ain't say AD yet. I'm like, I mean, yeah, I guess you can throw AD up there. Yeah, he's a name. I don't want to forget nobody, but I guess AD. You don't even know. We gave you the throw. Okay, why y'all? Oh yelling my at me? god. I just got here. Why y'all yelling at me? I didn't even know what I was doing. Mookie just DM me and said, "Hey, pull up real quick." I ain't all getting jumped. Yeah, it was a. Uh, I'm about to I, be. I, is I hope this is an all time defender. I was just gonna nah. be Nick Caruso. No, he yeah. is. I was gonna be Nick Caruso. Like crazy, yeah, but like I'm looking exactly. at Caruso. They go. They gonna think I'm nasty. Both yeah. Thompson twins. Uh, <laughs> oh, you trying, you trying to make him uh, go on all the time? I'm looking at Giannis. For sure. I'm looking at. I haven't even said like a Mobley or whatever, but it's cool. I'm. I'm gonna keep going down the line. Drew Holiday. Uh, Drew Holiday's Holiday. he probably got Aaron Gordon. Aaron I'm Gordon. Gonna go Drew Holiday. Wait, I, I'm just I'm in the East. I'm in Aaron the East. All time Casey ain't got that. Yet. I could say I'm Jimmy. I could say Jimmy. I could say Bam. Why is Aaron Gordon not up there? Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. If <laughs> I said if I said the, if I said Jonathan Isaac, y'all would think I'm crazy. But I all right. would. Cool. Rudy Gobert. He got play at some point. Bro. Rudy okay. Gobert. He's playing the season. Uh, Lou Dort. Um. <laughs> I'm not being crazy. Y'all think I'm crazy? I don't know why that's crazy. No, I know what you're doing. Is there defense no, in the league or not? God damn. You just got mad at me for Aaron Gordon? Really? Draymond Green is still in there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in there. I, I Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard. Mm -hmm. uh, I still ain't say Wimby. 
I, well, I'm not there yet. Anthony Davis, LeBron James. Uh, is there anybody on the Phoenix Suns that I'm missing? Probably not. The Kings, no. The Mavs, Luke. No, let me stop. Uh, what's his name? I'm gonna go Wimby. Wimby, because we here. And I ain't gonna lie, Herbert Herbert Jones. So oh, I don't know, man. Uh, <laughs> you going yeah. Yeah, you're going that? You're trying to kill my unk, bro. Oh, shit, unk can't man. handle that, bro. And you know what's crazy? The 90s. And, and Omar, what is, know, the it, what, what is the case for these players? What are the case for these players? This and, is my, current, yeah. current era players that you can make an argument for being all-time defenders. Mm-hmm. I'm not mad at this list. Mike and, it, and there's some names. I was about to say, there's some names that I did yeah, not no, no, there's definitely 10. I will say that, chat. There's definitely 10. Like, he he had some names in there that's obviously trying to kill all the old people. There's actually 10. There's if 10. I, I didn't say Mitchell Robinson, like uh, Bezos just said, Marcus Smart. Oh, if you, all right, look at Mitchell Robinson's block rate, twin. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, man. I say Evan Mobley. I value switchability. Brooke Lopez <laughs> as well. I, we did not name these names, but we'd be nasty. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> I ain't even pressed the button for the ball talk yet. Bezos, how you doing? Derek bro? White? Oh, <laughs> I'm doing good, bro. Doing. Do- <laughs> hey, man, I'm doing good. I'm doing great. I got my white claw with me. You know, just a drink for the pod. I don't just have chilling. any water. Just chilling. Sorry, interesting thought. Energy up. <laughs> uh, Sage, how you doing today? Uh, well, now I'm thirsty, but um, I'm doing good. Um, excited for the pod today. I don't know why. I have tons of energy. So um, let's get right to it. I'm not going to lie. Getting right to it. Let's get to it. Um, basketball is my favorite sport. Maybe you didn't ask Dama. Yeah, you asked Dama first. First oh, person. Oh, oh. And that's, that's how crazy. we got into that conversation. That's crazy because you saying that, but I guess it's fuck me, huh? I thought we had two more to go. Nah, uh, two more. You would be the other two if you know our. No, had. I thought I thought you went Sage, then me, then Damo is next, then you. We always do that. No one ever asks the whole show. You do it. I who never say. I literally, legitimately, never say that. What you? No, it's not something you say. It's just something we do. Oh more. No one ever asks you. No, you do the it. only you one do it. that does that. I've done it before. Oh, okay, it's fuck me. Huh? Okay. Right. It's not. Oh, I'm um, all right, bro. Chat. How many times do y'all think Bezos has asked Omar how he, how he's doing? Let's just get it. Let's get the let's get the masses' opinion. Let's get the masses' opinion. I think so. He's done it before. I think. I think. I'm positive he's done it. Before. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm positive he's done it before. This nigga is disgusting. Um, from Omizi Hoops, <laughs> Omizi knows ball on Twitter. No, but seriously, this was a uh, oh, uh venue. <laughs> Omar beat you. <laughs> oh, y'all bored, but I'm getting water, right? That's not the Omar, Omar, Omar high roller. They're, they're bored. They're bored. Legend of Omar. <laughs> Thinking Omar. <laughs> the fight Omar. <laughs> the Omar post. <laughs> Omar's choice. <laughs> 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 oh my word, you now. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> oh, shit. oh my god, that but <laughs> Thank All you, right. Omar. <laughs> Welcome to Omar's Arena. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, take it away. <laughs> okay. That's what we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Just laugh with us, bro. Damn. I gotta get you this fluid and chill fluid and all. Oh, God. All right. One more town hoops, bro. Yep. No, one's got a, they always got a town in their name now. <laughs> Poor podcast. <laughs> Pizza, Pizza who podcast? My nigga. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> okay. All right, man. All right. No way y'all still doing it that entire time. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> They've been bouncing this whole time. <laughs> that shit was so They've funny. been bouncing this entire time. <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, Woo. All right. <laughs> Um. All right, so you know, basketball this weekend was pretty boring. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basketball. Basketball was 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 pretty black. It was, on. it was on. Now, of course, I'm talking about the professional game. The women. I ain't gonna lie, college hoops. This is. It's it's time to shine. It's March, baby. <laughs> it is March. Um, did anybody partake in the women this weekend? <clears throat> I haven't had a hug since second grade, so no. I watched the third quarter and on. It was it was a fun game, man. Fun game. I literally started watching once I seen there was a fight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's 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 back it up. Um, I consumed a a good amount of um women's hoops this weekend for those that don't know who's new to this and you're not true to this but of course we'll make you true to this by listening to us the um ugh, my girlfriend is disgusting but she's over here talking about mexican food so the women and the men college tournament happened this weekend these were the conference tournaments um mm-hmm. and it was it was just some great high level energetic basketball we'll, we'll get to our favorites right now um you know, Juju Watkins put out a, a a hamster class. Don't know if y'all have ever seen her play. Look, if you're missing mid two thousands basketball, that's what you need to watch. I'm gonna, let y'all... <laughs> I'm gonna let y'all know that right now. If you want to see somebody shoot thirty eight percent but score forty five on two assists, that that that's what you that's what you I need. That. That's what if that's what you need, and I'm being dead ass too. If that's what you need, that's what you need to watch. But bro, freshman Juju Watkins um, broke the freshman scoring record. Also, left the Pac-12 championship. Um, young Kobe in the making. If you don't know, she's second in the nation in, in scoring for the women's side at 27 points. I'm trying to find. I hope so. <laughs> I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find her last couple of game logs. Oh, okay, here we go. My God. <laughs> when I tell y'all this is she's a um Kobe Kobe did a good job. Rest in peace, Mamba. Um the championship game, she shot two for fifteen. Mm. Um again, no assists. She is not passing that bitch. Six um, turnovers too, man. Yeah, six turnovers to six I tried to pass it. Oh no, Sage. <laughs> Tage, she's not all ripped. She's not turning the ball over from passing it. She's turning the ball over from driving right hard and running oh. into three defenders. She is not, trust me, I don't want that to be mistaken. She is not attempting to pass this ball. Oh, damn. All right. Um, UCLA two overtime game. Uh, uh sprains her ankle in the first overtime, comes back on some Paul Pierce shit. Nine for 27 from the field. Okay. Okay. Again, four turnovers, one assist. She is not getting these from turning the ball over. 33 points, though. Uh, again. <laughs> Got two <laughs> dates in this motherfucker. I ain't going to <laughs> lie. He is a bad. 30, 35% from the field. Uh, but this is, yeah, that's Juju Watkins, man. I, I don't know. But freshman won the Pac-12 tournament. Uh, Six of 32. What? <laughs> I thought they were two Listen, dates. listen. No, they're not. Juju, <laughs> Juju no, is a not. killer. Don't get me wrong. Juju is a killer, and I don't want nobody to think I think anything less to her than a killer. But let's get one thing understood. That girl is a chucker. Hall of Fame shot chuck. Can we see some I tape? Mean, oh, yeah, I'm about to say, yeah, as a person please, that has never please, seen please. her even dribble a basketball. Mm, let's do, let's do I know the, she's going to be highlights, but I just I know she, see what and, she's and taking. And I do, <laughs> do want to say she is a freshman, so I do understand there is a lot of room for her game to grow. I just I just want to say I question and I know USC's women basketball used to be a great thing when Cheryl Miller was there but I like do we trust them to recruit well around her or is this about to be black Caitlin Clark just no passing like literally just the shots this is crazy well she can't really shoot the three either like that so it won't be that for sure but um it will be 
<laughs> I was talking about in terms of volume of shooting. What does she do? Now, now wait a minute. Now, now <laughs> y'all scaring me. So she, no, no, no. she, 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 um, this is against at the time number four Stanford. You're gonna okay. see a lot of threes in this game. Dribble into it. Not trust it. Him. Not a, uh, or not like that, like Caitlin Clark said. Here. But um, yeah, they're 15. This is her. Oh, is this the whole highlight thing? I don't. No, no, no. We don't want to see that. That's not what we want to see. My bad. My yeah, bad. Yeah, that's four game highlights. No, 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 no. We want to. This is. Yeah, we want to see something like this. Right where she left off. A minute at 55. Jump got eight. <laughs> em, em, okay, side step. Uh, um, walk her down, walk her down. I like that. I seen Tatum do that. I like that, man. Uh, yeah, early JT. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Ooh, hey, ooh, okay. ooh, she moving like JT like out the hezzy, there. Yeah. I don't know. Like the I, find my, I find my player chat. It's not fast <laughs> either. I ain't going to lie. Yeah, I'm about to say she's a methodical <laughs> hooper. She's a methodical mm. one. Okay. Did you see the four nice. break down your opponent. Hey, nice. Hold up. <laughs> That Kobe man, thanks. Get into them spots. You get to a little spot. No, she's gonna pop that motherfucker. Now, mind you, she has 50 doing this one. Can she go left? Oh, uh, well, uh, she pounded left a couple of times. It was only two dribbles. Okay, uh, three dribbles is actually the uh, optimal way of seeing if a guy can create. So, I actually disagree with you. <laughs> Gotta <laughs> hear me. Go town. Bang bang. Uh. Okay. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, that was for. Okay. That was. Like, yeah, that was for fifty. I think. Yeah. Yeah, Mike, they cut. They cut, a, they cut a good bit out. They cut a good bit out. Yeah, but you get, did. you get a vibe of the buckets. It seemed uh, like it seemed like those uh, points were needed, but at the same time. Uh, what's our efficiency in that game? Uh, Does it that matter? Game, yeah, no. one, one just. <laughs> but two, that game, that game, I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, well, let me see, let me okay. see. I oh. just wanted to make sure she wasn't shooting them in and out the game. She shot 40, uh, 54 percent um, from the field. She also shot fifty four from three. I think if I'm not mistaken, she had over, because uh, they only scored sixty seven. So mm -hmm. she had fifty one. Damn. Tell you, Scarlett. It really don't matter. Yeah, it really don't matter. Shit. Yeah, you talking about inner out of the hoops, man. Damn. Now, the game before that, she shot 29% from the field. And what was Damn. the volume? You want someone lose some, man. Eight for 27, Damo. So. Damn. Yeah. So she did the same 27 shots the next night. I was like, yeah, no. See, that's the I like thing. that girl. The percentages. You guys like the percentages with the volume, so niggas know how much she's shooting on a daily basis, not just one offs. Like every game, she's getting twenty five to thirty five shots up. I remember that stretch not too long ago. Literally, every game I would see of her, like a box score is ten for thirty, fifteen for thirty, eighteen for thirty. Two for 32. I'm like, ah, damn. <laughs> <laughs> All of them, two assists, no assist, no assist, one assist. Mm -hmm. yeah, who, is it like just... passing that she got six? Oh man, <laughs> end of the month type shit. Um, all right, so that was from there. It looks like Paige and them are about to close out for their Big East championship. Another freshman, uh, Hannah Hidalgo's team, Notre That's Dame crazy. won the ACC championship. Uh, Hannah hoops. I'm wa I'm walking them down. Hannah Hannah's probably the best freshman, which is actually crazy seeing that Juju's doing shit like that. Um, now let's, let's get to what we really want to talk about. Mommy Clark walks him down for her third straight uh, Big Ten title. I wish I saw this game, bro. Damn. Yeah, you should have seen any of her hoops this weekend. I'm not a lie. Again, another hamster class. <laughs> another mm. class. I still don't know if a hamster class is a good thing or not, man. Hey, man. <laughs> it's a class. <laughs> How do it's a class, bro. Because people are talking about this. How do y'all feel about people recreating the kobe photo i, I don't it. feel like that's even i don't even feel like that's the exact same thing but fuck it just don't take a picture with the trophy ever again i don't i don't know man i'm cool with it i ain't got a problem with it i mean unless really, they wear a no... colorful jacket in a in a shower doing this then okay now you're copying kobe but like oh well she's in the fucking shower 
<laughs> well, hold on now. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. <laughs> She's in the shower. You fool. <laughs> she has triggered my trap card. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, eh, I don't, it doesn't what? piss me off. But Why did Damo hate it, though? You said you hated it, Damo. Yeah, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Do something different. Be original. I hate this shit. And, and honestly, honestly, and I'm just hating at the end of the day, I've seen too many people do it for moments that I don't deem uh, bright enough. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. Let's fuck about Big Ten Championship. Even if you got three of them. What the fuck are we doing? Do something different. Cheer. We well, can. I was, I was, I was just about to say, just do it. Just uh, do, do whatever you want. Just know what comes with the territory when you're doing Kobe's pose. But, uh, hey, fuck we it. We doing Kobe's pose for Big Ten Championships and you don't win the Natty? Fuck out of here. What are we doing? What are we doing right now? So my mans can't inspire the youth? Damn. Yeah. She, it's so she, she, you you want. Plus, this was the third one in a row. So she goes, I mean, she scores 34 12. Uh, she ends the game with two clutch steals, too. They're going to overtime. This is the, this was a huge game. I'm not going to lie. Um, of course, I think if I'm going to show Juju's highlights, you're not. I think I'm going to show Master. Back, bang. Curry. I mean, Caitlin for three. You know, we're not going to watch Master. That girl, that girl good. She's winning out of this year. Caitlin running screen fade away. Oh. I said running screen, running. Just if you're it. if you're on the audio side right now, we are watching Caitlin Clark's highlights from the championship game. Only a couple of them because they're already in the third quarter. They want y'all to get to the fourth quarter so bad. I really hope. I really, hope, I really hope. Step back. I really hope she gets all this shit off in the WNBA level. Hey, she, just to, just to stick it to them old bitches. I swear. Damn, why they gotta be old? Why they gotta be bitches? Yeah, do they say, like her or not? I'm confused. I've heard too many. I've yeah, heard like too much from an outsider. Shit. From an oh, outsider, I don't know. She's not ready for the 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 physicality in a women's game. It's it's different. She's not prepared. We locking that shit up. I've heard a lot of shit like that. Uh, that, that is not bad. Let me say a lot. Let me not say a lot. I heard some shit like that. I heard some shit. I am I'm not talking, I heard that from, I don't know. I've heard from former WNBA players. And Cheryl Swoops. You only heard from Cheryl Swoops, nigga. No, no, not only Cheryl Swoops. So Cheryl Swoops wasn't the woman there uh, that was there in the locker room that day. So it wasn't Cheryl Swoops, buddy. <sighs> so all... <laughs> you probably heard it because that's the only thing that's crazy. different. Pro- probably, probably. probably no, the, uh, well, so so the thing is, all, all they're essentially saying is, hey, somebody coming from college to pros and niggas is saying she about to average 35 and 12 mm-hmm. like she's doing right now. That's a crazy concept. And I think y'all would say the same thing if somebody was in college and they say, oh, yeah, they're about to come out and average 30 and 5. Well, she is a crazy concept. Oh, so. Do you think, what would you say if somebody was about to come out and av- or if somebody, they said they was going to average 35 and 12? I know what we thought about when Wimby Dang. was talked about. I'm going to say, yeah. I'm going to say, um, we would tell them to tamper down. Yeah. Tamper even, down. If, even if you say Wimby, <clears throat> even if you say Wimby, how many times do people say stuff like this on a year in and year out basis for it to not be true? A lot. I was a just lot. joking, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Like, yeah, they, they should probably come about, no, no, no. about some rookie have, averaging like 25, 30. Not as much as you would think, actually. When I'm trying to think about it, guys that generally got like the hype of, oh, he's about to be box office in the league, at least in, yeah, in relative time. in the last 10 to 15 years. It's probably only been two where someone didn't say that someone's going to average like 25, 30. Yeah, I'm about to say, I don't think as many as you would think. It's happened. I just don't think it's happened as much as you would. We doing. Ten okay. years, Nick niggas was doing that for <laughs> Jillian local for. Remember, I remember niggas was talking about uh, D'Lo going crazy. Uh, definitely, definitely, Bi being KD Junior for sure. A lot of people were skeptical on Zion coming into the league. I remember that. Uh, Lonzo Ball was Steph with a forty inch vert, and then Markel fault everybody, and then everybody thought Markel would be averaging twenty. Twenty five at the gate. Shout out one of my best friends that thought that Markel would be top 20 all time when it's said and done. So there's that. I don't uh, think there's ever been a prospect that was even people were talking about was averaging 25 out the gate. So. Oh, no. no motherfucker. I remember we reacted to something about Wemby. That's why I brought him up. Someone someone explicitly said that Wemby would average I say, I would say Oh, yeah. T- t- Ticket said he was going to average 27. But... Yeah, that's what it was. I was like, uh, aside somebody... from Wemby, that would probably be it. But Look, uh, well, I don't it? know how people was on DA, but Luca, Luca had hype. Because people was like, oh yeah, he's gonna fuck people up. I just Zion, had, had, there was also a lot of well, doubt. There was a lot of naysaying doubt. Yeah. People thought it wasn't you, gonna you, transfer. Every over. time, but every time you say that, you see, I, I don't like when y'all do that. That doesn't negate what Sage is saying, and that also doesn't negate what the conversation is. 
if there's anybody out there saying this person is going to bless the league, these people aren't ready, et cetera, et cetera. Because another name he didn't mention out of that same draft class is Trey Young when niggas said that. Mm, oh, Young. he's about to be Steph Curry. He's college Steph Curry. Mind you, big pundits are saying that. So even if somebody's saying, oh, well, there are people that are saying the opposite. Same thing with Caitlin Clark's situation. There are just some people saying the opposite. Like, yo, she won't bless the league like that because it's the professional level. Simple as that. Now, where I disagree with them is I think she is. I'm in the hype. <laughs> I'm, I'm with the hype. I'm not going to lie. I think Caitlin better I've go. Heard bing, 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 bing. I've heard that she wasn't going to make the league. Ooh. Some female NBA enthusiast. I don't know. WNBA enthusiast. So let's really talk about it. Why is Caitlin Clark more box office than like 90% of players today? Because she's white. I've been expecting that, man. Um, that was yeah. too fast. That's the answer. That's the answer. Like, no topic. That is. No, part oh, of it shit. is she's white. Part of it is the play style. The play style is really exciting and electric and all that mm -hmm. stuff like that. But part of it is because she's white. And, and the game that we'll talk about right after this is it, it will explain, you know. Exactly what that means. Yeah, exactly what that means. But yeah. Part of it I couldn't imagine them doing this game in a football stadium. Could you imagine? What? Yeah, this would have went a whole nother. And I will say these all these stadiums were bigger stadiums. Mm -hmm. We ready to get on to the next game? The real game. Oh. Game. What is that? Oh. I played a video on this other side and you know plays an ad or whatever. Well, I should probably see the fight. Uh, let's get ready to rumble. So what I watched was a bunch of good games for real for real. a bunch of good height you know intensity players playing and i'm going to talk about this when we get to the full end of it because there I, I ain't gonna lie i didn't get it when i was younger i get it now there is something special about college and all of that was capped off by south carolina lsu this is yeah this is for the sec championship uh going into this just to let y'all know South Carolina has beaten LSU 15 straight times. Um, and I mean, just an overall, a hamster class, just a full on hamster class, um, defensively, offensively. Angel Reese played good. Uh, Anissa Morrow played good. Flage played uh, pretty straight. On the other side, you know, Malaysia Full Wiley, a freshman for, for South Carolina, had 24. But let's skip to all, let's skip all that. Let's skip all that. Let's skip all that. Did y'all see the fight? Yep. As it I sure did. Live. It was it was crazy. Yeah, I, I think we all saw the fight, but I am gonna pull up the clip. Um, so for those that don't know, towards the end of the game and throughout the whole game, it was chippy. So we're we're definitely gonna show some stuff that led up to it. But towards the end of the game, uh Flage gets the ball inbounded. She gets the ball stolen from her uh, by freshman Malaysia Full Wiley. And let me see, let me see. Oh, I could do it on YouTube. Let's do it on YouTube. She gets the ball stolen from freshman Malaysia Full Wiley. And, um, you know, she intentionally fouls. Cool, 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 cool. Um, then she pushes Ashlyn Watkins. I'm sorry, I'm doing it like this. She pushes freshman Ashlyn, or she's not a freshman, but she pushes Ashlyn Watkins, um, and you know that that ignites this big old situation, this big old scrum. I got the video. Let's 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 tap in. Let's tap in real quick. Yeah, it's a sea violence. Call it a brawl. Gotta stop calling things brawls, man. Gotta stop calling things brawls. Brawl. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. All right, all right. That was escalated, handled kind of quickly. Okay. Everything seems calm. All right, good shit. What could pop? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I want to slow some things down to introduce some concepts. First and foremost, again, frustrated. This was a chippy game. Refs aren't calling a lot of stuff. There was hair pulling uh, between Angel Reese. Angel Reese pulled Camilla Cardosa's hair. Um, there was some other back talk, slapping yeah. in the faces. Well, Angel Reese pulled her pulled her hair. Uh, I think I'm yeah. I'm, no, not her hair. I think it was Bria Bill's hair. But uh, Angel Reese did slap her in the face. So Camilla had a busted lip at one point in time in the game. 
Um, and the refs aren't calling any of this. There's some really, really chippy stuff going six eight. Flage might might be uh I'll I'll tell you right now. Flage might five, be 11, six, five, ten. Five, ten, five ten. Yeah. Um and we've seen Camilla push somebody before. She's got a history of thuggish, ruggish behavior. Uh and not, I'm I'm being jokey, Jesus, before somebody comes in here and says we're we're oh. killing it. But yeah, she's she's coming full fledged. That's six seven coming at you. Now, Flage's brother right here coming over to uh Oh my god. The score is now <laughs> after I found that it was her brother, made more sense, but I thought it was just some random dude that was trying to fight, bro. <laughs> that's got me off. Scores table, and they said that he found out how tall she was because he's still coming down. He hasn't touched Earth yet. And then he figured out whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh. He figured out OG. his back or his head is only at her like back or shoulders. Her shoulders. He's like right below her shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. Or they 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 what do they they kick out like six players or whatever. Camilla is the only one that's suspended for the first round of the tournament. Uh LSU goes on to win to go 16 and 0. Uh I am gonna talk about um the the coaches' responses and stuff like that. But I mean just tell me how y'all feel, man. Tell me how y'all feel, which I'll taste um, Well, let me just say off rip, uh nothing but thug behavior. Um oh my God. Crazy thug behavior, and what kind of thug is allowing this man to jump through and just try to assault these women? What kind of uh, 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 fatherless people are we allowing in these stadiums? This is crazy. Um, on top of that, let me just say, Camilla did nothing wrong in my opinion. She's the enforcer. Uh, she she came through, checked the old girl for checking her teammates. She did what she was supposed to do, in my opinion. And to anyone saying to the whole conversation of oh. Pick on someone your own size. Last time I checked, in the men's game, no matter who does what, we men out here. At the end of the day, we men. And if I'm enforcing and checking you for my team, that's what I'm doing. Mm. Look at this. We got people getting away with stuff like this out here. Of course I'm about to do something. Like, what? This is insane. I didn't even know this was going on mm. in the women's game. This shit is you way don't more do that league. accidentally. <laughs> oh, okay. At I don't all. Think, you I don't. don't think nowhere near here. He literally Nothing goes like this. <laughs> Nothing was an accident. This, <laughs> this, this, this whole situation is exciting. I love this. You need more of this in women's game to get it more exciting. Um, and shame to the South Carolina fan. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. That one South Carolina fan that got uh, caught texting about the situation. I expect nothing less from the second best USC in the country. Um, that's what you get messing with South Carolina. Yeah, I mean, uh, this was a crazy situation. Uh, like Dama said, I think we need more of this in, in sports. Um, but I will say the thing that caught me off guard was the suspensions in the game. Because anyone, any bench player that left the bench was ejected from the game. Because apparently during, uh, I don't know if it's an NCAA rule, but during squabbles like that, you're supposed to stay on the bench. Everyone left outside of one player from USC. And she was like on the border of, like on the line of leaving the bench or not. So for those who don't know, the rest of the game, like both teams played with five players. USC played with a bench player. And I think um, during the telecast, they were saying everyone who got ejected can't play the first round. Like I, I vividly remember hearing that, but yeah, they, they corrected they, themselves. Uh, yeah, they, they corrected themselves uh, later during the telecast. And it, I think it was just Cardoso that won't play in the first round, which is a tough loss. Uh, she seems pretty important for them. But yeah, man, I, I, I like I like seeing shit like this. Damn, is that crazy? I don't know. Yeah, I'm. I don't know. I don't really have like a a girl take here. Uh, outside of I ain't gonna lie, Nick, nigga, you pissing me off. They going if if it, it handled business. I don't really have anything else to say to be honest. Especially after seeing the hair pull. Uh, I don't really have that much. She pushed the motherfucker because she wanted to push the motherfucker. They were playing sports. Things got emotional. It is what it is. I like to see it. Um, this is the second time I've looked at, and I am an omni-casual, not even like the casual I am in an NBA. When it comes to women's hoop, I'm an omni-casual. But this is the second time I'm sitting here thinking that college uh, women's hoops is the way, is the way personally. So um, hopefully when these motherfuckers get drafted, they can inject a lot of this energy into the um the WNBA because we definitely need it over there. Oh, uh, for sure. Because this is exciting. Okay, so I found the the lip hit to whose garage is going up and down. What is it going on? Okay, that's just 
Uh, Mine's just, just crazy. Uh, so this is them down there boxing out. Angel Reese is fighting for her life. Um, and then she swings around and kind of just hits, hits, hits in her face. Uh, and we can say that this one may Okay, that, be, yeah, that's, yeah. But so she does end up with a busted lip after this, though. Ooh. Damn! I think in the next clip... Oh, no, they just slow it down. Uh, but she does, like I said, she does end up with... Um, she got her there. A so busted. she busted her lip and pulled her hair? Yeah, I'd yeah, say, but definitely the hair pulled. There ain't nothing on that. Let Let me say before um, we get into, you know, uh, the coaches' responses and stuff like that, and talk about that. I, this is what NBA fans have been missing, and this rivalry? this doesn't rivalry one, and you can't uh, you can't call it a rivalry because would you say sixteen and zero is a rivalry per se? Probably not. Probably not. But just some of the, the energy and the excitement. I'm going to play KG's words on too because apparently he goes crazy on it too. Pause. Um, but just the energy, just the excitement that is coming into the game. Um, you know, people people are saying that, oh, the, these people, these, these, these narratives just don't exist in the women's game or whatever the case may be. It's right there. It's right there. It exists right there. It also exists in college uh, men's. I'm not. I'm not gonna take it away from uh, the college men either. All these things exist in the college men's game. Damn, where's the? Uh, I think I like it. I guess um, there was a coach. I think he was coach. I think it was the UConn head coach for the, the college men's game. He's running up on people in the stands, talking about, "Hey, come fight me, cause, cause, cause you'll get hurt. You would. You will get hurt fucking around with me." Um, and I like that. I hate to sound like one of them old guys. I'm tired of the buddy buddy. I really am. If if it mm. if it means a a not as good product, and this is just everybody trying to fix the NBA at this point. If it means not as good of a product, I don't want to see that no more. I don't want to see that bullshit no more. They cannot find this coach. Do you, do you think while while you find that, uh, and this is a question for everyone, do y'all think this is a Cause, yeah, it's, it, is it a cause of money being something that people know is in the NBA? Cause, uh, like people make this argument about like YouTube and shit. The fact that, you know, the the best creators were the ones doing this for the love of the game before there was money involved, and once money involved, the product got diluted. Um, you can make the same case about the NBA. Uh, you can make the same case about music. So, is the reason why that factor is still in NCAA women's basketball is because of the fact that they are just starting to figure out that there's there's money in this, or I don't know, are, are there other factors in play? Because I feel like money has something to do with this. College, college to me is always, and, and again, I, I'm learning this as I get older. College has emotion. College has passion. Now, and, and maybe that's it. Because, like I said uh, on stream, and here it is, right here. Let me play this. This is the coach for the team. Adam Silver, aggressive too. <laughs> and apparently Troy Weaver did that shit uh, this weekend too. But college, college has always had some like more emotion or passion. This is all that matters to them. I ain't going to lie for some of them. This is the highlight of their lives. Like this is, this is the precipice. You know, some of them have to, I don't know, do, do physics, you know, later on today or tomorrow, whatever the case may be. And they want to go back on campus with the big 10 championship so they can get as much pussy as possible. And it caps off at four years too. Yeah. Like with the NBA, you can play however long you can, but Hey man, in those four, maybe five years, you gotta maximize the fuck out of your time if, if you're in college. So, I don't know. Um, I, there's definitely an emotional thing between college and the NBA that's lost. Um, I think money has a money has a factor in a lot of decisions, of course. So I'm not gonna say it's not a factor at all. But I think with college, it's just a lot more pride that goes into these things. The NBA, some players can just view it as a business. So not everyone is always into it. Um, I'll also just say culture in the NBA in its entirety has changed from um, from team perspectives to individual individual uh, individualism. 
Did I get that right? Or uh, whatever. Uh, being being your, building up your own brand versus like building up a team brand. So a lot of the time, the players are thinking about what's best for them versus what's best for the thing for the team, and that's resulted in a lot of rivalries outside of literal coincidence of hey, we played this team multiple times, really being a thing. And I know for sure um, someone's gonna be like, oh, there's a lot of rivalries today. It's just not remotely the same as it used to be. Um, and I even think there's a couple more rivalries than perhaps Omar would or Dama would, but still, it's just not the same. And am I calling for straight up? Am I directly calling for straight up violence? No. Am I asking for players to, you know, get a little bit more frustrated on the court, care more about the court, and maybe violence happens indirectly? Yes. So it is what it is there. It is what it is. But yeah, I, I'm. I'm excited. It's just unfortunate that I just don't watch college because every time I'm seeing college trend, it's actually pretty fun. I would say that um, you're definitely on to something, Souls, but I don't know. College, college. Time out. What you do to your mic? Your mic's too. Wait, what happened? Hello? You just got hella loud, bro. Turn yeah, it's. Turn that game a little bit. Yeah, turn, 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 turn your game. I think that's it. I think that's all it is. Turn your mic game down. Oh, Gramps. Yeah, okay. There you go. Is this working? Oh my god, it oh, went up. No, no, you, you no. Turned it the opposite no. direction. Cuz it was turned down. It was all the way There down. you go. There you go. Right there. Maybe a little louder, but it's fine. I don't, I don't know. know. I, I I I literally don't know. It, it sounded like you were opening a garage when you spoke. It okay. was crazy. Hello? Yeah, you good. Am I good now? Yep. Oh, okay. I can hear a fan. Oh, that yeah, that's okay. Go ahead, go ahead, man. I feel like there's always been like money in the women's college game and college game in general, but with the introduction of NIO deals, maybe some of that passion, and I agree with Omar, is definitely passion. It's a passionate game, passionate form of basketball. With more with more money be given to the players, maybe it's gonna be a little less passionate for the players in the upcoming years. Maybe, not too sure. It that's the only thing I could see changing. But for the most part, I feel like college is always going to have that edge over the professional sport just because of the money aspect. Yeah, and that's fair. I think especially because y'all know that I I mean, I watch whatever types of hoops. It don't really matter. Um, my, my main takeaway from this weekend was like if visibility is it. Like I just said, damn, every time I've it's been trending and I go back and I watch it or I catch up, it's like, oh, man, I'm. This is great. I'm I'm low key mad that I missed something like this because this just sounds like either great hoops, great emotion, great passion, and what's going on. People that care about what they like, but the the issue is visibility. I will say, trying to watch these games and these different tournaments, dog. I've signed up for free trials for like three or four different streaming services, and that's a whole yeah. That's a whole another fucking problem as to why I have to do all that. Um. Because the whole weekend was good. I see somebody say uh, Kentucky game in Tennessee was good. South Carolina and Tennessee was good. Came down to that same Car- Camilla Cardosa, the one that got into the brawl. brawl. Um, she hit a game-winning three. First three ever attempted in college. She had a game-winning three, and her coach had flown in her parents from Brazil. Uh, it was the first time her parents ever got to see her play basketball, and it was when she hit this game-winning three. I cried. She- she should have taken the two to tie the game, but she took a game-winning three to keep them undefeated. Their first time winning a basketball, or the, her first time taking a three. Parents flown in from Brazil, um, you know, all these things, and all these sound like great storylines. But if nobody can see it, does it really, you know, does it even fucking happen? That's yeah, not- it, it is hard to watch the games, but I will say for anyone who still believes that like women's hoops is this primitive, unskilled, full brick city ass product please again just just watch one of these games specifically as we're going into march madness with high quality the highest quality of hoops that is that's going to be available because if, if you watch the final four last season um and just again that the the lsu U, usc game it's good hoops it's quality hoops there's a lot of skill um in these games that it, for for those who still have the perception that this is 2016, 2013, 2014 women's hoops. Like, I, I think it's a completely different game. Maybe I just didn't know exactly what I was looking at, even back then. But, bro, this shit is not a bad product whatsoever. 
And yeah. also, they don't need to lower the rims, bro. This, this shit is entertaining <laughs> without needing to yam the ball like like everyone's LeBron James, bro. It is entertaining as it is. Lowering the rims is such a, a hypocritical uh, conversation because we'll talk about how three points, three pointers are less shocking for us and how dunking is less shocking for us on a game by game thing. But then simultaneously, if the women were dunking, we from the NBA would be interested. It's the same thing. You're just seeing girls do it now, which would entice some of you, but not many of you. You would just be like, OK, they're dunking now. Cool. Like you would get over dunking very quick because you're over dunking right now. So uh, I think that idea is uh, stupid. But in terms of um, college being fire, even like the uh, when UConn was undefeated a while back, when you mentioned like 2013, 2012. I remember that. So college just always had the storylines. I just ah, just don't be watching. Also, oh, I think people like a difficult. I wasn't looking the first. Time. Think. Oh yeah, no, no hand, no contact, just straight dropping, just dropping them. Aye, aye, aye. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm never gonna press you to watch anything. If you don't like, you don't like it. The only thing that I don't like is when niggas claim they watch Detroit Pistons basketball and things. Oh yeah. Like that, that's in the conversation. They're not the Detroit Pistons. Oh, God. They're not the Washington. And you know what? Let me not even disrespect the Detroit Pistons no more. They're not the Washington Wizards. Yeah, they're the new team. We need to talk about that, actually. That can be a topic. Which yeah. franchise is the team? <laughs> like right back to the, to the 16th seed or 15th seed. So. Um, before we get into anything else, I do want to play this because the big, the big, uh, bigger conversation coming out of this is the, the coaches' responses to the fight. Um, We'll just play a game. I'm going to play the coach's responses. Y'all tell me which one y'all would let y'all kid, daughter or son, play for. Y'all just let me know based off of the responses. And keep your composure. Um, but I, I'm going to say this. Um, Fly J came to me after the game, right after the game, and she just apologized and said she's not that type of player. And I really appreciate that. It's something that somebody won't ever hear if I didn't say anything. And she's not. She's a really good person. Um, things just got escalated. Um, I'll take responsibility for what happened from our side of it. Um, Jerry, I don't know. It's ugly. It's not good. Um, no one wants to be a part of that. No one wants to see, to, to see that ugliness. But I can tell you this. I wish she would have pushed Angel Reese. Don't push a kid. You six eight. Don't push somebody that little. Uh, that was uncalled for, in my opinion. Let those two girls that were jawing. She was gonna say, "Go at it." Mm. I'm with the second coach, man. I'm, I'm with the second coach. coach. That's I'm what you're with the second coach. Yeah. I, I want my meet. daughter to play for someone that defends her on the the podium. I don't know. The first coach didn't defend him. Yeah, Re- not as hard as Kim. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. Respin first coach, because I was I was shocked y'all went second, but I ain't gonna lie. I could be over it. I'll, I'll, I'll play. I'll play it again. Cause, Cause my, I'll, I'll play. I'll also play. Uh, her response right after. And this is about them pu- about the push, because I ain't gonna lie. For the first half of what first coach was saying, I was like, "What the fuck is she talking about?" <laughs> so all right, she's talking about keep the push, your composure. Right. Okay. Um, I, I'm gonna say this. Um, Fly J came to me after the game, right after the game, and she just apologized and said she's not that type of player. And I really appreciate that. Just something that somebody won't ever hear if I didn't say anything. And she's not. She's a really good person. Um, things just got escalated. Um, I'll take responsibility for what happened from our side of it. Um, and Cherry, I don't know. Mm. She also says, and I think I got her words. Yeah, they both didn't have a bad response. Yeah, now they're bad. Now they're bad. But uh, I ain't gonna lie. Second coach like kept it. I mean, granted, you know, more vulgar equals real in nowadays society. But she did honestly keep it a little bit more. I'm I'm gonna go second. I might be with you. Yeah, I'm gonna go second coach in seven. Seven though. The first first coach weren't bad though. I don't I don't dislike either of them. But I say. The idea of like, hey, I wish he would have pushed. Da, da, da. Like the first coach is better for like life advice. The second coach is a better coach, in my opinion, based on what, based on just those sentences. Damo, would you, uh, you look like you got something to say? Oh no, I picked the second coach. Uh, yeah, I, I said second coach first. Yeah, I need that. What? Yeah, I'm gonna disagree. I'm gonna disagree with y'all. Uh, 
not taking, like Don said, she, her player went up to her and apologized, was remorseful of the situation. Um, Don apologized three, four times. This is her. Uh, well, I'm not gonna play it, but uh, her again at the championship ceremony as they're receiving the trophy. I just want to apologize for what took place out here. Sometimes when you play basketball, things get a little bit heated. I know it didn't come from an ugly place. Uh, she reiterates that multiple times. Uh, but to me, I kind of agree with most of the sentiment that's coming from the internet and just other people. You wished Angel Reese would have, or Camilla would have pushed Angel Reese, the player that was injured. I know y'all didn't know that, but the player, oh, I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> no, I knew her ankle was messed up. No, no, no. Oh, oh well, well, up. fuck. Yeah, no, I didn't know that. All right, well, and, now and I look like a dumbass. Fuck. And, and the the quote unquote best player on your team, the one that you need for the next round. If 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 uh, Cal- if South Carolina doesn't have their uh, Camilla, I think they'll be fine. If LSU doesn't have an Angel Reese. I don't know about them being fine in the first round even, but you wish that she would have pushed her so there could have been a fight because you think that Angel is really fighting? Like, is that what you wished would have happened as a coach? That seems a little crazy to me as a grown-ass woman, too. It, it, it's it's one of those things where it's like she's defending her girls, so it's like, eh, I see where it comes from. Is it the most logically sound thing? No. It's just, Somebody, so, so Angel Reese was already injured? She had She had, like, tweaked her ankle. But I'm saying what, what I heard from her saying that isn't isn't oh she she's an injured star. I, I I wish she should have pushed the injured star. It's Angel Reese is a player that's you Not know close closer to her in height. I wish she would have done that instead of picking on the the five eleven five. I I hear what you're women. saying. It it would be so. Why aren't you condemning the action as a whole? Why are you wishing that she would have pushed somebody else? Because if she would have pushed somebody else, her size. I'm assuming that you think. She would have also gotten a reaction from somebody else her size, and it would have been a, a fair situation. So you're condoning the actions of fighting, period, point blank, as a coach. That's what it sounded like to me. I don't know. I don't know if she's condoning it. To answer your question, it. yes. I mean, I'm, I mean, yes, if it reacts to me, yes. And I'm okay with a coach condoning some shit like that if a player attacks somebody or does something to someone on your team. You have the right to defend your guy, your girl, your teammate. You should defend your guy, your girl, your teammate. I'm not sitting here saying, hey, let's walk up in Malice in the Palace, everybody just going swinging on people. But if someone is going to push one of my players, I would have wished you would have pushed the bigger player. I would have wished yeah, you picked on a person saying. your size. If Shaq goes around pushing Sean Marion, you're going to be like, what the hell? Man, go push Amari Stoudemire and see what happens then. Why are you pushing Steve? Uh, why are you pushing Steve Nash? Push Amari. Push somebody bigger. Push a bigger guy. That's how I'm looking at it. I don't see this. I mean, if you want to say, "Oh man, you shouldn't be condoning violence at all," all right, cool. Go with the first coach. That's fine. Everybody yeah. don't coach the same. Everybody don't have the same philosophies. Everybody don't view violence the same. Yeah, think, I'm not. I think coach number one was definitely more reasonable. But uh, you asked me if who I want to coach my daughter. I low key want someone to look like uh, like unreasonable bias towards my daughter and the team that she plays for. Uh, maybe that's just me though. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I didn't perceive it as uh, her saying that um, that she is condoning it or even like wanted it. Uh, someone in chat says she started off with saying it's uncalled for. I probably just need to hear the second coach go again. But um, in regard, like I'm, I'm looking at it as like, hey, uh, uh, pick on someone your own size. Like if we're going to fight. I wish you would have picked someone that actually, you know, could have fought you. That was kind of like a punk move to push our littlest player or one of our littler players or anything like that. But I don't think she's advocating for, hey, next time we see each other, just frame one, go push this um, uh, Angel Reese. I don't think that's what that is uh, implying. I see somebody saying, didn't Omar just say he likes the rivalry and doesn't want the buddy buddy? I, I personally like the uh, or dislike the rivalries or I like the rivalries and I don't want the buddy buddy. You're absolutely right. I don't want the coach of my child to be in a situation where the coach is literally saying, hey, man, go out there and fight her. I wish you would have pushed the big one. I wish you would have, you know, done all these things. I'm different than the coach. I have different standards for myself than the coach. As a fan, it's different. As a parent, all right, that's a little different. But, I mean, yeah. And also, and also it's a tough position because if – Cause it's not like, uh, what's his name? Cause it's it's not like you know, uh, cause the little girl obviously like 
she technically started the shit, right? Same age? Huh? Ain't y'all the same age? No, I, I don't know their name, man. Talk about Fly J. Yeah. Oh, 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 I'm talking about a height. Oh, height. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to say, did she the one that started it, or was the was the tall jump the one that started she it? She was the one that started. She she initiated with the first push. Yeah, so this is already gonna be awkward to speak on because we're gonna be like, uh, yeah, yeah, my player is an idiot. <laughs> so so it's, it's already awkward to speak on. But personally, yeah, it's like if it's gonna resort to violence, look. I just I just wish you would have did that, but I'm pretty sure she said that it was uncalled for. A chat, someone else in chat said she literally called it ugly. I don't have I, I ain't got the clip in front of me, but I'll pro- actually I can go ahead and find the clip. Did you just say it was dumb? It was stupid. It was ugly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah, exactly. Yeah, she was like it was dumb. It was stupid. It was ugly. I just wish like you know what I'm saying. So I don't really have a problem with it. I wouldn't say that she's implying violence. I think that's where I just hard disagree with you. I wouldn't say she's implying or even um insinuating or even accepting it condoning it yeah i wouldn't say that mm-hmm. well omar do you you clearly prefer don don and how she responded do you think kim responded in a bad way or do you just prefer the um that's good question. i do think she responded in a bad way i i especially fly, okay so fly J and i think she knew uh because they had conversations fly J and angel had conversations to decide i mean it's your coach and your player so that should be a part of the conversation in the locker room um you you you're a, you're a white woman and we got to bring race into it always. You're a white woman who already has bad energy on you. People people have bad energy on you from some of the stuff about how you were coaching even when you were coaching Brittany Griner. Now, that may be too much for this podcast, but so you also are responsible for these young black girls who also have a bad stigma about them based off of last year's events and just based off of them being young black girls. So then you have somebody named Flage pushing somebody else uh, to initiate. And Flage is, is trying to get you to relay a message or has a message that says, Hey, I apologize. I got heated. She apologizes to the coach, all that stuff like that. Um, and your message isn't, Hey, Flage apologized. That's not stuff that we condone. She is very remorseful. Um, she even went to Don and, and said these things, et cetera, et cetera. They've already shaken hands about it. Camilla went on Twitter. Flage went on Twitter. Angel, all of them went on Twitter. Hey, they've already apologized that. Your thoughts are, yeah, it was ugly, but I wish you would have pushed Angel to pick on somebody your own size. Like these are, these are young black girls that already have that stigma on them. Don't put that. Cause, cause I promise you, had this maybe gone a little bit differently, this would have been the ah, nappy headed hose. There it is, right there. That's the nappy headed hose fighting right there. It could, of course, it couldn't been left. But, but my counter to that is the counter I've always said. Um, I don't. In terms of people that are already on the fence of that, bro, there's no saving niggas like that. It's no, it's no saving that population. These, these obtuse ass niggas. So if she was a black coach, that's fine, right? No, nigga, nobody said that. <laughs> Yeah, but that, that's that's what I'm saying. Like the um the the people that are already of the mindset that if Flage had pushed Angel Reese and they responded in violence, that they already was gonna do, they already gonna do. My counter is quite literally, hey, I've never cared about that audience. I've there's no winning with an audience that has premature stereotypes and is waiting to bash uh black people, especially for making it about race. I don't I don't give a fuck about them to be honest. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, we need yeah, we do need a part two. I see that in the chat. We do need a part two. Y'all can think it's a reach all you want. I mean, I seen I seen how those girls. You and A. I seen matter of fact, yeah. Let's do it. Q- I'm gonna say yeah. I know you. I know you're serious about it. Fuck it. Go let's go. I seen I seen how they were treated last year when Angel Reese because that was that was the that was some funny ass shit too. Last year when Angel Reese went up to Caitlin Clark and was doing the ring point and everybody ugh, these jungle bunnies look at how crazy they're going. In front of in in front of a uh, David uh, Point Noy, yeah, all, them, all types of shit. I remember that shit. shit our, our dear white savior, yeah, bro. And I guess because it's black on black, it don't matter. But you know, we'll continue to move down the line as we wait for those people to come up. You know, I, I'll never duck the click the link, y'all. If you disagree I, with Omar and or me, really, I, click the link. Yeah, come on, man. We'll 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 get in uh to it. You know, he's not clicking that damn link, man. I know, especially the the fake the, the the ones without the profile pictures and stuff like that. Maybe the next platform will. Well, yo, stop, man. 
Is he wrong? Is he wrong? To, see this Ty Dolla Sign. It's the same people that that always that always come up. That that always come up. No new name, he met. <laughs> I don't got no problem with it, but you know, just all right. I already know. Um, all right. So Cruz wants to know. Oh, this is former athletes killing podcast. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. There's not much to talk about. There's not much to talk about. Hey, How much does experience actually matter? Uh, OKC could very well lose early in the playoffs due to lack of size, poor rebounding. Uh, but you know, it could be an experience. Uh, Vince Carter said, maybe, just maybe, these kids don't know any better and just aren't afraid of the moment. So the question is, do y'all think that playoffs uh, experience matters in going into these deep playoff runs, et cetera, et cetera? And how much do y'all value it? Yes. What the hell? Yes. I, look, I get 2020, uh, 2024 is all about change, all about different things, reviewing the sport changing interpretations all of that's cool but in terms of experience potentially not mattering guy like, let, let, let's let's draw a line here man there's a there comes a certain point in time of that boy nice has to have like been there to kind of truly grasp the slight changes in the postseason or some of the major changes in the postseason that hinder the way that you play or it could even enhance the way that you play in the regular season the idea that a team simply can just scheme against you at least Four times itself is something that you really wouldn't really feel until you're in that situation. Hell, I could play fucking 2K. If I play B-Souls one time and never play them again in my life, or maybe another time five months from now, that's one thing. But if me and B-Souls say, hey, um, April 1st, we're going to play a best of seven series, and then I can scheme against this nigga within every two days. That's an entirely different experience. And that's just using your goddamn thumbs. So, yeah, for, for sure, um, if you don't think it's the most impactful, go for it. I'll hear you. Definitely disagree. But in terms of it, it mattering for a little bit, of course. By the way, the Q&A got flooded out of nowhere. That's cool. That's like two people. Keep going, though. Does this playoff experience matter? We'll bring him up in a second. Dion, um, matters. I would say uh, for me, obviously, yes, playoff experience matters. But I'm with Vince, man. In some instances, in some cases, you can have guys that don't realize how inexperienced they are, and they're just going on the ball. And I understand it, it, it has to take a rare case for that to happen, but until it happens, we don't know. And I'm optimistic. I like to be optimistic about things when it comes to basketball because I want to be proven wrong, and I like seeing history being made, and I like defying the odds. So do I think that they'll lose because of playoff experience? No, I don't think the Thunder are going to lose because of playoff experience. I think the Thunder are going to lose because they're too goddamn little. That's why I think, and that that you can have the most experienced vets out there. If they little, they gonna fucking lose in my opinion. So it, I, I'm not worried about that. They're gonna lose because Josh Giddy is getting minutes, and then they can't shoot, and teams just guard him like Rudy Gobert. No amount of experience is gonna change the fact that Josh Giddy can't fucking shoot. So unless we sub him out, niggas are just not gonna guard him. And you can say if you want to classify as development. Player development comes with experience. I mean, all right, gang. Keep, all right. I mean, you got me. I don't know what to say there. But other than that, yeah, no, I'm not going to say inexperience is why they lose. My my follow up is going to be on a scale of one to ten. How much are you factoring in experience? For me, it will go case by case with what young team and what they do and how they play and how the game is being played. But I will always hover between six to seven. I think it just depends on what the, the conversation is. Is it just succeeding in the playoffs or specifically winning a championship? So in, in my my thought process too, and again, Dion and Tyrese will bring it up in two seconds. My my thought process process behind it too is because when I hear it, I be hearing stuff like um, you know, cat with one uh one round of playoff experience now has more playoff experience than I'm gonna just throw a name out there, even though it, it doesn't make sense. SGA. Like, so Cat, let's say Cat went to the playoffs last year and SGA didn't. And so then, and, and Cat and them got swept last year, right? Cat got swept, played bad, all that stuff. And then the next year, this year, okay, the Timberwolves are facing OKC. Well, you know, Timberwolves got playoff experience on their side, so got to factor that in. Do we really? They got their asses smacked. Oh, I agree there. The players that got swept. Players that's been first round exit, you ain't got no experience, bro. Unless you've been like there five, six times. Sorry, I was eating. Well, unless you've been there like five, six times, what 
Yeah, fuck you. You don't know what you're talking about either. You lost. I just, I just think historically speaking, especially of a team this age, like you said, if you want to be optimistic about it, that's fine. But it's literally never happened where a team this young has won a championship. There have been a couple cores um, that are around this age who were really young that made it to deep playoff runs. But in terms of winning the whole team, uh, winning the whole thing, um, it, ju- it just hasn't happened. Is OKC the exception to that rule? I do think they are prime more than other cores to be the exception to that rule. But um, if I if I were to bet, yeah, I do think playoff experience matters because um, they're going to face, in my opinion, in the playoffs, teams who uh, have just as much talent as them, if not just a little bit less, but do have more playoff experience. That's a uh, good question right there. If this is a veteran, but for eight straight years, I mean, I guess Joel Embiid, eight straight years, he's only had first round experience winning. Is that are you really factoring in that playoff experience? I'd say, uh, well, well, he's been further than the first. I mean, he's but... been in the first round before. That's what I'm. What? That's what I'm saying. No, nah, no, nah, I'm saying no. Nah, well, I was being. Well, uh, it sounded. It sounded like you were saying he's. He only never went out the first, first round. Yeah, yeah, oh, he's been like out he yeah he yeah. only got first round. Let's say like only two of them. He's won two. Okay. Are, you, are you really like? Okay. Uh, I mean, yeah. Me personally, I'd say yeah because. You, um, as someone in chat brought up in a little corny way, but seriously, you can learn from losses. But more importantly, when you've been there a couple of times, you at least know the routine. You just can't hoop. You, but you you know what's going on. At this point, your body's accustomed to it. You know, it's the playoffs. I ain't going to get that. You have at least 10, 15, 20 games. You just can't fucking hoop. And, and that's fine. Uh, you need you need help, buddy. I think in comparison to a core that's never been in the playoffs together. And I think the last time the Thunder made it to the playoffs was in 2020. And SGA was a big part of that, but clearly not the same player. Clearly different core. Yeah, I, I do think someone making it in being bounced out in the first round, even if it's seven to eight years, that's, that is that is a difference maker. Now, um, what I never really uh, answered, because everybody else did, is the Thunder a case where it could be different? think we all agree yeah <laughs> this team is kind of just that much better in terms of that boy nice so it's very possible the thunder could mop up a lot of teams now i'm with damo while i was eating i was pointing i'm with him i don't think this team will make it out of the west because i ain't gonna lie i y'all know i don't like unathletic players i don't give a fuck about the three and shit if they can't run i got a problem and the second thing i ain't gonna lie they're just a soft team to me i don't think this team is like a team that if they're aggressive and the other team's aggressive, that they will make more fuck it, you little plays type shit. Like, I, ultimately, I feel like the Thunder are a team that's not literally, but poised to get punched in the mouth in the playoffs. So, it is what it is. Yeah, this is like the, the 2011 Thunder to me. Because in 2011, like, they won 55 games. I think they made it to the Western Conference Finals, but, you know. Can I ask, because somebody made a, a, I just see Cruz made a phenomenal point in the terms of example. How did the experience help the twenty one bucks? Or is it because uh, they've been there a couple of times for sure. Um, yeah, they made mm-hmm. it to the Eastern Conference Finals in twenty nineteen. Um, I know they went to seven against us in 2018, 2020. Yeah, Giannis uh, been in off since yeah, twenty fifteen. Got, got bounced in the second round. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, mm-hmm. first first round. Yeah, I think this kind of proves at least my point in my opinion. Uh, 2015, six games, 20, he's missed the season. Then 2017, another six game, first round exit, uh, 2018, seven games, first round exit, 2019, by the way, he's actually gradually getting better in the postseason these three years. Um, 2019, he would actually make it to the second round loose in six, uh, to the bucks. I mean, to the Raptors, obviously, you know, the build a wall thing, which I think he learned a lot from as well. Also, also would argue playing higher competition means you'll get better. You'll learn. Uh, the following season, he got bounced out in the bubble by who the fuck was it? But and then in 2021, obviously. Um, how the experience help the Nuggets? My fault. You, you bring somebody up. My fault. Go ahead. You good? You can continue talking. It's y'all shit, anyways. W chatter. Nah, go ahead, gang. Go ahead. Nah, but go ahead though. Go ahead. Oh, I I had like two questions. The first one dealt with uh the the um. Uh, Women's NCAA side of the LSU's coach more so because I don't know when you're younger you're taught you want a coach that's gonna stand up for you more than anything, and I get that the first thing people are gonna jump to is race, especially because these girls were already in the news 
for shit that they did last year and it didn't make no fucking sense. But I don't know. I prefer a coach that would stand up for their players instead of just trying to take the easy route through it. Wait, so you feel like the other one didn't? And this this is a bad way to phrase this question, but I just want to know. Do you feel like the other one didn't stand up for the players? or I felt like she took a, a safe approach. I ain't going to say she didn't stand up for them. She just took the safest media route. She didn't say anything that was going to get her team or her in trouble at all. While the other coach took a very vulgar uh, mm-hmm. standpoint on defending her point guard, in a sense. Hey, come push my power forward. Who's hurt? Uh, well, I mean, it, I don't think she really was trying to uh, say push the power forward. She was just using Andrew Reese as, as an example because, I mean, a six eight person picking on a five eleven to six foot person. That's a big difference. While Angel Reese is closer in height, she could have said any number of names, but I'm guessing the first name that came to mind when you thought of big girl on LSU roster is Angel Reese. It's my six three. I mean, I, I hear you. And if that's the way people break it down, I think the I think the the outlook is so disgusting though. Truly, I think the outlook is disgusting. But oh no, oh no, I agree. I mean it, the amount of bad shit that could come from one mistake made on that LSU media team can fuck up the whole team's like the whole team's uh, track. It just it makes no sense. They're on a thin line because it's a team of a bunch of personalities, and the coach is probably one of the biggest personalities they have. It's just it's, it's a slippery slope. That's it. But I, I do prefer the the coach taking the more aggressive route. Oh shit! My light turned off in my car. There we go. The battery did. Okay, what's the uh, next? One? No, I, I was smoking in my car. My I, my kids are in the house. I don't I don't smoke. Oh, twenty two. Uh, okay. All right. What's it, the next? It's surrogate children. They're my sister's kids, but they're my kids. It's it's a little ah okay. situation. I fuck with it. Um, what's the uh? You said you had two questions. Uh, Damo. Damo streamed right before the fucking podcast, and he was talking with them goddamn old ass goofballs about fuck it fuck the 90s i can't stand old people when it comes to conversations because they just talk over people i'm willing to listen i'm willing to have conversations but them motherfuckers was just constantly screaming over him and i felt like you you held your own but you failed to point out some of the obvious things about the the 90s era that would have benefited uh the 2000 to 2020 guys i mean they they said constantly that Oh, it's more physical. It's tougher. But a player like Curry would thrive from illegal defenses. A player like Joel would thrive from illegal defense. You tell him you can't double off of Curry. You can't double off of Joel. So he's getting one-on-one post touches with whoever the fuck he wants. All it takes is a good screen and a switch. That's a one-on-one on a bad on a bad matchup. I wanted to bring up illegal defenses, but I was told I was being too long-winded trying to fight eight niggas. I couldn't stand that shit. Boy, I was sitting there like, I don't I don't know how you maintain composure because it was just full goofballs yelling at you constantly. And it made no fucking sense because the, the points they were bringing up was constantly that you were just the LeBron Glazer. I mean, I think anybody growing up in our generation has some sort of bias to LeBron, but not to the extent of calling somebody a Glazer. You said it yourself. You're a Lakers fan. What team is LeBron on? The fucking Lakers. Of course, he was, you're LeBron. He was glazing. He was glazing LeBron before that. We'll we'll get to. Um, I didn't even bring up LeBron in the conversation. They did. I didn't. Even we'll get to. We done with the nineties in two seconds because there's a question stemming off that. But uh, I'm a, all, I'm, all I'm gonna say is, bro, that talking over shit is not an old head thing. I know a lot of young dudes who do the same. Oh thing. yeah, I will give you I'll that. Second, Dion. Hold on. One. What, let me get Tyrese. Let's do two more and then we'll keep young going. niggas out there. Tyrese, how you doing today? Yo, what's up? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, I got two questions. I mean to ask y'all this, but I've been working at night, so I can't be catching y'all. So, when y'all was younger, did y'all learn about y'all history as black black people? And if y'all did, did you did you learn about it the ba- not just in school but outside of school? We'll let Bezos take this one. Um, I did not learn about black history as a child to the extent that I feel like I should have. There you go. Do you feel like there was a level that you should have learned about it? Um, 
I don't know. I just, maybe it's just how the American education system is nationally, but as a dude who immigrated from another country trying to learn about U.S. history, I feel like there was a more positive light to how things were in the American Revolution and, you know, after after uh, the, uh, whatchamacallit, after the 60s, everything was just all fine and dandy, uh, racism is over type shit. But Did you know that you weren't black? I did know that, yes. Hmm. So you're a smart guy, huh? wise guy. <laughs> Cheeky little bastard. I learned in school and I learned outside of school. Um, it was adequate enough for the age and I continue to grow even to this day. So, I'm going to say I learned a bit in school. Most of what I've learned came probably during my late middle school, early high school years when my dad kind of put me on to some things and I started to counter information myself in my free time. Just things I was interested in, things I heard, things like that. Um, but yeah, just like Omar, I'm still learning new things to this day. Always evolving. Yeah, it'd be very immature to say that I now understand the Negro. And I am, I am like, oh, I like, I, I am like uh, actualized. I definitely was learning as a kid, though, for sure. Even outside of school, my parents are definitely, uh, hey, this is this is what's going to happen just because you look like this. So without a shadow of doubt. Yeah. Um, but then funny enough, in college, what really like sparked the interest to learn more and more is um my history class, it was before, not even like the typical history lessons. This was like way back, like I think before 1800s uh, history, we was learning about that. And that, that was actually very, very fun. I think that's still my favorite course in college to this day. Do okay. y'all feel like when you was younger that it was your responsibility to figure out or go out your way to learn about black history or somebody should have sat you down and helped you learn about it or teach you about it. I live life. Yeah. You gotta find out on your own. You gotta find out everything on your own. If you sit there and wait for somebody to um spoon feed you something, you'll be dead. And you're not that person. You're not gonna go exactly what that person went through. Hell, I was at some point my, my household was a single parent home. So if I was going through if I was only being taught the experiences of a black woman as a black man, I would fail. Bingo. Let me ask you something, Tyrese. Did you are you one of the people that just found out that Rosa Parks is uh uh um how should I say Rosa Parks's defiance was planned? No. Oh, okay, okay. Because that was a recent thing. You said you hadn't been able to talk to us in weeks, and like a couple of weeks ago, it was like this discovery on Twitter. Wait a minute, Rosa Parks had a car. They planned that. What? <laughs> no, I, I didn't know that till now. Question like popped uh-huh. up was because I'm having a conversation with my uncles and stuff, and they said like when you was like when I was like ten or eleven and stuff. I should have went out of my way to learn these things. And I feel like as black people, like if you know about like anything black history or anything about us, you should like sit us down and teach the younger people about it. Instead of waiting for them, waiting for them to go out of their way to learn it. They right, Even though, though they should, but they right, though. You, shouldn't have to, you shouldn't have to wait. They, they're right. They're 100% right. You should not wait for anybody to teach you anything. For sure, people will uh, 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 present things to you for sure, but they just don't have the whole perspective. You listen to all my basketball takes? No. Why you say it like that, though? Yeah, he said that shit crazy. Not even... Uh, uh, I'm be, being serious. Why you say it like that, though? I hear all your basketball takes. I don't... But you don't take them in for gospel? <laughs> no. Well, why you say... Again, why you say it like what do, that? What do you disagree with? What do you yeah. disagree with? Yeah, you... <laughs> you dunking on this thing. <laughs> it's nothing specifically I disagree with. But you, like, but you, if we're having a basketball conversation, as long as I can understand what you're talking about and understand like where you're coming from, then we're cool. Okay. Is no there issue. something you disagree with? Wait, that is, that's not important. That's not important. Okay. So, but you, but you go out of your way to formulate your own basketball takes, though, right? I'm assuming. Yes. Same concept applies. Like you hear us. I, you, I'm pretty sure you, the, the statistically speaking, came here from B Souls or Sage and their basketball takes. So you came here, you consume more basketball. Got the takes from there. Uh, but you also watch basketball and consume basketball, and while you can take in other people's perspectives, you formulate your own perspective through living life and discovery. Why does that stop in basketball? I'm not saying that we that we shouldn't. Like when we older, we should. But like if I'm like ten or eleven, I literally don't know how to go out of my way and look about look up these things. You it should be read. on your parents. Yes, but at like ten or eleven, I'm not really. 
going out looking that bad. <sighs> like I'm in school, I'm just looking, I'm just being a dumbass kid at this point. Oh, like, hey, I was, I was like, an adventurous kid. That's just yeah. I was a, I was and a, I'm not, I'm right. not even necessarily saying I'm blaming you for this because kids think this way. That's that's fine. You just get more curious as you get older. For some people, I was curious yeah, as a kid. Okay. But yeah, you found yo. That was actually a good one. To, I can't say that though. Well, he found his penis. When nah, he nigga, nigga said you found the hub one day as a kid. That's true. <laughs> Damn, true. That. That's always like that's unironically a good point. At some point, you find those videos. How did you find them? Shit. That nigga dipped out and uh oh, it would be crazy if he said his uncle sat him down and showed him the hub, though. I ain't gonna lie. That would have been nuts. <laughs> um, that's my no conversation. <laughs> nothing, nothing. No, I heard that. That's wild. I know. Red tube was my first sight, man. Oh crazy. crazy. Man, call me, call me whatever. I was thinking about my first sight. I was trying to remember my first one. I remember. Sight wasn't years. the first thing that I saw though. So, oh, yeah, yours? oh I'm about to, damn. Now that I think about it. Yeah, sight wasn't magazine. Yeah, I'm about to say you had the Playboy. I don't know about magazine. I had no, I had DVDs. The well, I didn't have them. I knew fa- where family members hid the DVD. I I knew where the mags was, but I never seen them. I was a goody two shoes. Uh, the first time I technically my first. Um, in, in encounter with pornography was on on Kick the the not not the streaming app even though for some of you anyway uh but, but uh the messenger you know group chats was crazy back then and then I ain't gonna lie I think it was the videos I think I think the videos was the first sight what group chats were you in what oh, high school is uh, high school was Kick messenger man that's why you your first uh, time being it was in high school. <laughs> Or maybe late. Nah, high school. I was a good guy. I was a good wow. Kid. I had Alex in second grade, Damn. bro. I was wow. a good guy. I was a good guy, man. I was a good guy. My first time was definitely- But literally ninth grade. Literally ninth grade. So it should have been in um well, no, that's still high school. I'm second or third grade. My mine was definitely at elementary school. A thousand percent. No questions asked. Oh, oh no. Nah, nah. I was a little nigga. I Did I have no I, I might have seen like a naked body by then, of course, but like the on the screen, nah, no. nigga, nah, nigga. I'm talking about the big screen. Whole, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, whole like whole I didn't clock whole in the whole game. Whole I, I knew what basketball was, but I ain't. Never... If that's the case, hold on. Wait, let me see how old because this I'm about to date myself. Chat, y'all ready? Uh, we talking about naked bodies. The the first vivid memory uh, yeah, came out in 2000 memory. and. <laughs> 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 this nigga did not just say tip drill. No, I'm dead ass. tip drill came out in 2000. I was probably four. <laughs> I'm being dead. Oh, nah, yeah, my parents was good with the movies. Yeah, I never got, I never seen the movie. BT Uncut Tip Drill has a uh, an uncut version of it where they are twerking and they are absolutely naked. Oh, I think mine was American Pie. I think they put like whipped cream on the titties, and I seen the titties, and I was like, "Whoa, what the fuck? Why is this on TV?" I mean, it must be ass. Tip Tip Drill made Tip Drill was one of the videos that made white people really get serious about attacking hip hop. Like it was, it was. <laughs> and it was an aggressive video. I'm dead serious. I know Dalmo remember. Was that was that the same way he did the credit card swipe? Yeah. I mean, it must be ass because it ain't your face. I need a tip drill. Yeah. That 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 was a legendary video. Uh, I can't remember <laughs> my first one. I can't even remember. That's bad. I can't even remember. I'm thinking early memories. I, even think. I had to be like five or six. Let's get back into the basketball, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How the fuck did we get there? <laughs> Um, so I've got a, I've, I do got a question, and we'll put the perfect bow on, and this is spoiler, but we'll put the perfect bow on. Um, we done with the '90s on Thursday. I wanted it to be today, but on Thursday we we're gonna wrap puppy up so well. I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. we got a special surprise for y'all, but anyway, I want to discuss how we got there. Just some, just some working theories out there. Um, and I've seen some tweets and and, and such that I kind of, you know, want to pull up maybe, but I want to ask y'all in y'all's own theories, in y'all own words, how did we get to being done with the nineties? I think this is a chicken or the egg question who threw the first punch. Was it the young guys or the old heads? I'm going to go. I'm going to go old heads, man. Old heads be hating, man. Every single generation, there's too much footage of some guy who's 10, who, who, who was watching basketball 
at their peak 10, 20 years ago looking at this new generation and talking about how diluted it is, how easy it is to score, this, that, and the third. Um, and every single generation has it. So I'm going to go. It's the old head's fault. Yes, for three. I'm going to ask y'all one question just to determine my answer. Is this throwing the first punch? Is spamming footage of back in the day players more than current players at any point in time? Is that throwing a punch? Yes. In my definition, yes. Okay. If that is a punch, the old nigga started it because they had always tried to tell you, hey, but just because uh, LeBron here, just because Ray Allen hitting threes, don't forget about Reggie Miller. Don't forget about all these things. So if that count, oh, yeah, old heads, yeah, I started that shit. It's okay. But if that does not count, oh, this new nigga's all there. I ain't got a lot of new niggas started that shit. before 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 you go on, before we go on, Cause it might we I don't want it to just be an old dudes did it thing. If somebody were to say that, okay, well the reason why we did this is because there was this forgot. There was this, oh man, such and such is better than insert X player from the from the the, the yesteryear, and it might have been disrespectful. Y- year two Curry is better than Isaiah Thomas. It, so if a, if an old person said that in response to what y'all are saying, because I'm oh, no. probably gonna oh that's a punch to me. I will say that. that oh that's no, a punch yeah, that, that's me, why so. I said yeah. If showing and that's why I asked Damo if or really all of you if just simply showing footage and marketing the old era to even the same level as the new era is a punch. Because if that's not a punch and that's just fair game, you're just marketing the NBA. Then oh, I'm sorry. I di- I would disagree with souls right there and there. New niggas started this shit, man. and y'all new niggas, y'all gotta y'all gotta just be cool with it. But y'all definitely started it for sure. Y'all sit there all the time, and you'll tell a motherfucker, "Hey, I ain't gonna lie. This right here, <laughs> it don't get better than this. Um, if you don't like this, you don't like basketball. But then you take it a step too far mm. and say that this is the best game you ever seen, uh, best uh series you ever seen, best shot you ever seen, all that stuff. These these things headline time and the time out, and as a result. It'll take a unk to just sit there and be like, yo, not too much. So that it's literally literally saying not too much is the response to you guys sometimes overhyping things. Now, is it a destined? It, and I also think by design and mild spoiler, don't want to ruin anyone, anyone's part. But I also think it's designed for the new niggas to always start it. Because at some point, I'm going to see Jokic keep making these wild ass shots. Jokic walk around with six rings. I got to say he's worse than Wilt. <laughs> I, I just have to. So at some point, I am going to make an observation. And then the the old niggas responding, whether it's respectful or not, that would be them, you know, responding to what I said. I agree. Sorry, I might say sorry. I wasn't trying to talk my mouth full. I would just say that. Um, eat, huh? Oh yeah, I, I seen y'all. Food. I, I was like, right let's make it a mukbang. I got food right. In fact, mute mode. I might say, fuck, let's make it a mukbang. Then I'm like the only nigga not eating, so I went to get some food. But um. I would say, yeah, this is definitely an old head started a conversation, well, situation for the simple fact, even Omar, if their response, if their reaction was, oh, I only started saying this or showing this because of this random account saying Curry's better than John Stockton. Okay, buddy, this is still a bit of a thing in the basketball world of the old head caping for their era of their time. You can go back to the infamous Will Chamberlain saying he'll drop 70 in the 90s. So what's the excuse then? Because that was the current game, and the old head before it was saying, that, oh, my game is this, that, and that. It's always a thing. Everything that comes after, nostalgia is a, is a motherfucker. It's an ass kicker, and people get their ass whooped by, by nostalgia all the time, and you prefer what you grew up on what you deem as the real thing. So I, I would say, sadly, old heads, and it's not just old heads from the 90s or capable for the 90s. It's the old heads that was capable for the 60s, the old heads capable for the ABA, Old heads came for the 70s, the 80s, all before then. This has always been an old head problem. You can't blame the youth for enjoying what they're going through and what they're living. That That's that's them. You have to accept change. Yeah, I, I do hate to be that guy. I, I want to I wanna give grace for the old people so bad. <clears throat> um, and I can even I can even enjoy some old things. So maybe, maybe they would be more inclined if you know, the newer generation gave respect or is just due or whatever the case may be to something older, they would say, oh, okay, okay. So they can, 
you know, they have the full context and they can have these conversations. But kind of like Donald just said, like, whatever's going on in my day, because you got to think about what makes you enjoy something as a human being. It's more than just it being the best quality. It's I'm a younger person. My brain is developed to X, Y, and Z. Um, This is the only thing that I've seen. I have emotions tied to this. Really, I'm tying this feeling to something other than what's going on right now. Because if I asked y'all about, okay, what's your favorite, um, what's your favorite song of all time? What's your favorite album of all time? Most of y'all would probably say something that came out specifically at a time in your life where your emotions were high, things seemed like the most important or whatever. Most of y'all would probably say... 10 to 18, a uh, uh, song that came out when you were 10 to 18. Maybe maybe not even 10, but yeah, but it, again, that age range, like uh, 14 to the early 20s. You know, I'm only pushing it up a little bit, but right. Me so is right. 10 to 18, 14 to the early 20s. I'm a teenager. I remember this song because... My 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 middle school basketball team, or not? I said fourteen. My high school basketball team uh, won regionals, and I had just gotten a girlfriend. Uh, and and my mom and dad gave me a new car, and the first car that I put on was, I don't know, Money Longer. Okay, cool. This is hitting for you on a different type of wavelength. I think I think Drake's best album is it to me is not um uh uh which one, Jake? It's not Take Care. Honestly, I heard if you're reading this is too late. I remember specifically being in college. In in college, we smoked a blunt. The Drake came out and we sat there in a group and we played that. And this is freshman year of college. So y'all know freshman year of college is a fucking zoovy. And thinking back on it, it probably wasn't for real. But it just is because it's freshman year of college. So I think that's Drake's greatest album just because I remember that time. So the same thing with basketball. Like that's why younger people are definitely gonna say. <laughs> Hey man, LeBron, this LeBron shit is the best thing I ever seen. I remember watching the block with my brother, like the LeBron block on Iguodala. I remember watching game seven with my brother on pins and needles, standing up, jumping up and down. When he blocked that shit, I jumped on my brother's back and he's just, like, we're going crazy. So I don't have any connection to that old shit. So naturally I would say it, but they take it as disrespect. And I think that that's where... I don't know. I think that's where the old people get it wrong. I really yeah. do. Yeah, I and I say it playfully, but very disrespectfully, if you just were to quote it, that, oh, I don't give a fuck because I didn't see it. But I'm saying that in a, if anything, in a self-depreciating way to that, hey, I'm conceding. I don't know. And I'm not going to act like I know. I'm not going to act like I have any nostalgia, any uh personal bias towards these things. So a lot of times I'm talking 90s, 80s, 70s, 60s, especially. Yeah, these things are going to get hold by me. You ask me questions on them because I don't give a fuck about them. So I only can speak on literal statistics and maybe one of the 11, 12 games I've seen on this specific player. And that specific player probably is just a player that y'all won't shut up about. They, they asked they asked Sage about, they asked 20-year-old Sage about who, who's the best center of all time. And he's like, well, shit, you know, Dwight Howard was cool. What about Wilt? I don't know. George Mikan. Who the fuck is George Mikan? No, no, dead ass. It's one thing you say, Will, I heard a Will. I would dead ass respond with, who the fuck is George Mikan? <laughs> like, I literally wouldn't know who that is, bro. So, nah, I, I just need I just need the young, the young gun niggas, because we is dunking on the old niggas. Not really, but they gonna take it as that but for all the young niggas bro hey stop trolling up, bro stop stop trolling unk so bad bro i feel like we are the reason why i think technically 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 we started it but either way it doesn't matter because we are trying to finish it we we are the ones that's trying to finish it i think without a shadow of a doubt someone in chat had a good point you could argue throughout history in terms of throwing the first major punch the old heads because they were the ones that were on tv while the hoopers were hooping so they're the ones that are, hey, they headline, they said this, and then you got to wait until post-game for the current guy to respond. But now what we're doing is we're saying, yeah, your whole era, fuck that. It don't matter. And not only that, the worst player in this league right now, giving y'all 40. We already talked about, we already had those conversations. Now we're, now some people are dead ass sitting here. Jalen Brown's probably basically Michael Jordan with maybe a wee bit af less athleticism. Like, niggas are wilding, and Unk don't know what trolling is, bro. <laughs> Unk don't know what that is, but you really uh, pissing them off. I'm going to tell you, when it really got when it got serious on my end, because you know me, 
I, I've had these conversations. Like, I don't know if y'all have had the luxury of doing this. I've had these actual conversations with older people in my life. I come across coworkers. I talk basketball in real life. And I, I, I ask the old heads what they don't like about the game, what do they think is better. And they sit there and say shit, and I come out the side of them in person. Yeah, Dwight Howard is bodying Carmelo, and you're an idiot for thinking Carmelo can handle him. Like, I, I troll in real life. I remember my granddad talking about Dave Bing, and oh, Dave Bing is a bucket. Dave Bing ain't got shit on Rudy Gay. Graham. Sorry, Pop. Like I Rudy Gay is like that too. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> hey, we talk about it. Rudy Gay is giving Dave Bing problems, Pop Pop. Like, what are you talking about? Like, go, driving his blood pressure up. I was doing this when I was 13, 14. Like, I've always done this. So now, this shit is just, it's natural to me. So I'm going to keep doing it. But I've always had the frame of mind, like, all right, yeah, we done with the 90s. Like, all right, Jordan obviously could go to his left hand and finish if he needed to. <laughs> Jordan obviously double pound or whatever. He, he got it. When I finally was like, oh, yeah, this shit is crazy. crazy. When I was like, oh, yeah, this shit's getting crazy, it was on Twitter. I don't know who the white dude was. He said, I sat and watched all of game one of 1991, and I have a graph to show you what yeah, Andy I seen triple that. went on what side. And he showed that graph, and all I seen was a flurry of dots on the left side going right. I was like, oh, yeah, these old niggas is cooked. Because not <laughs> only is niggas trolling, niggas trolling with statistical evidence that is actual fact. It's crazy. I don't know how you're doing You're trolling with the truth. It's one thing to troll and bullshit. We all troll and bullshit. To troll and drop facts is... That's all I do on my anime shit. Unk is done. All I do. Unk is done. Unk is done. There, a, there is another video, though, that uh, use stats as well to prove the other side of the argument. but Ooh. With a bigger sample size. Who y'all think is winning? Unbiased. Try to be unbiased because obviously we're from the younger niggas. But we, who y'all we, think is winning? We're done, we done with the 90s is, is wholeheartedly winning. <laughs> but again, it's something it's something that when we say winning, it's like it's it it means a bad thing. Cause oh yeah. I don't I don't think you could go into it. It's it's about appreciation. I said it on I don't I don't think I said it on here. I think I said it on playback or in a space. Like sometimes I watch Jay Leno's car reviews and, and sorry for making so many just comparisons, but it's it's the truth. I watched Jay Leno's garage. And Jay Leno will pull out a car that's a 1920 Cadillac Ford Model T, Model A, whatever the case may be. And Jay Leno's not, he wasn't born in the 1920s, but he can sit there and he can talk about the car. He can talk about the miracles and modern ingenuity that come with the car for the time. And he can talk about how great it is. Now, that car probably goes zero to 60 in no seconds. That part that car probably doesn't even reach 60 miles per hour. So, of course, that car can't even compare to a modern day Toyota Corolla. However, there is still some appreciation without depreciation. So you would never see Jay Leno come on here. This is better than the new Corolla. The new Corolla couldn't hold a candle to the 1920 Ford model with no power steel. Come on, bro. I <laughs> Yeah, the, the sports conversation is very weird on both sides of the fence because in like like what you said, in other areas, we can both appreciate that shit is evolving and getting better while still, like, when we talk about the greatest of whatever, still keep it relative to their era. So, for example, I don't know, um, if I ask you what's the greatest iPhone of all time, you wouldn't just go to the iPhone 15 Pro just because it has the latest technology with the fastest speeds or whatever. You would point to, I don't know, like an iPhone 4 iPhone 6 or whatever. Um, hell, even if we talk about just straight knowledge, like if, if someone asks you who the smartest people ever are, I'm pretty sure a lot of sci regular scientists now know what Leonardo da Vinci was doing, but you would put Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, you would put uh, Isaac Newton in that category. But um, you would still acknowledge that people nowadays on average are just smarter. So I don't know. It's 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 weird to me. I'll say this, and here's a fucked up part, because I was talking about uh, the younger generation, a hey, chill with the trolling. It, it's a pendulum, but this one I'll even say is a little bit more unbalanced. The older niggas have more responsibility due to just simply being older and wiser, right? But they also have to know how to uh, talk to the younger generation and i think that's where they have a problem they get emotional they get angry and they just frame one say you young niggas are dumb and move on um not to even without without diving into detail even a point that i would like to bring up is just something i just randomly remembered but i remember lurking in one of y'all spaces and someone was older 
spazzing on somebody and you could just tell that it kind of like shut shorty down because she was just like oh well fuck and then everybody was sitting there with the sentiment of like yeah, you're older you've been through these things but the advice you're giving they're not gonna want to hear that but if a motherfucker their age a motherfucker their age says it even if they say it the same way at least they know it's more relatable but if you're an older nigga saying that it's like shut up huh <laughs> like like take like take take for example anybody in chat with a brother and sister Imagine your dad spazzing on you and your brother spazzing on you. Imagine your mom spazzing on you and your sister spazzing on you. It's it's an entirely different feeling, even with the same lingo. So, but but I think that's the another uh, slight issue as well. Maybe I'm even uh, devaluing a little bit of my point here because it's typically not the same lingo. Typically, if Dom was going through some shit and we were to give him advice, it's going to sound a little bit more uh, relatable than an old nigga giving him advice, even if what he's saying is pissing us the fuck off. So y'all just got older generation just got to learn how to talk to the younger niggas. Truthfully, my my problem with the whole uh, we done with the '90s thing is like I, I'm fine for criticizing old generations. I am completely fine for doing that, but it was just the way he like it was just the way it came about, and motherfuckers just ran with it, knowing it was a bad way to. Oh, see, this is this is what we were waiting for, bro. Uh, low lights. Like, all right, bro. If if someone made a video exposing all the shit. But brought up like like what Damo said, like statistics, big sample sizes, all of that. I don't think it would have hit the same fine, but um, I wouldn't have had a problem with that. But now, if the big sample size says we done with the '90s, what you gonna say? <laughs> That's fine with me. That's fine with me. You are gonna be done with it? I and I. But we this. we all know we just all know it's a, it's a bad faith argument. The the way it just came about because if I someone said the same thing about defense nowadays, you would say. All right, you're just you're just clipping. I don't know. And, and that and that's true. And that actually does go to the next point. Uh, one, I'll say that uh, dang, no, say say Tage is right. There's a, there's a level of I want you to remember that these are where these things came from. This is what we had to work with, uh, and the reason why you're here today is because of these things in the past. So we can appreciate without depreciating. And I think a lot of older people try to get that across, but again, the way it's delivered is is uh nasty. Friend of the show, family of the show, Wes. Uh -oh. Convince some of y'all only watch hoops to boost your own egos. The whole look at how well I understand the game crowd. Um, do you enjoy this shit though? Like the lengths y'all go to discredit some players are insane. That done with the 90s shit is a prime example. Say when Sage said that it's, you know, we're trying to do better, I, I actually disagree. The current generation is actually doing worse because of the way that we just have basketball discourse as a whole. It, we can't go season by season. We can't go three year by three year. We go game by game. I, I talked about it um, before. Like, you know, every week somebody is compared to Luca. Every week. JT, let's put JT in these MVP conversations. He's over Luca. No question about it. We got we to gotta talk about it. And the way that they talk about it, not by crediting Jason Tatum. Let's slander Luca. Let's. This is how we're gonna get to this point. Oh, he doesn't make his teammates better. Look at this clip, defensive highlight. Uh, well, he's still fat. He's not a winner. All these things. Damn. Why? How? How is Jason Tatum good? Jason Tatum has a bad game. I think that was against the Nuggets. I want to say he's had a yeah. lot of bad games recently. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He has. He has a bad game. Whole narrative shifts. It was silent. Oh, I think it was a Cavs game. Uh, has has a bad game. Everybody just mics turned away. Everybody shut the fuck up. Cause uh, my timeline was different. But uh, was it the Cavs game? The the Dean Wade game. Yeah. Yeah. Motherfuckers, yo! Every time Tatum has a stinker, the Twitter is on his ass. Oh well, and my, every time I specifically mean on how they slander Luca. But you're right; they are on Jason Tatum's head. Oh yeah, but they don't bring up Luca anymore. They don't no, bring up Luca anymore. You're absolutely but, right. Go ahead. So that game was later on in the week. The next week, Monday. Hey, why aren't we talking about SGA over Luca? No. Who's better? That was le that's legitimately yeah. the way the chain of events goes. Then you got a bunch of nerds, uh, and I'm, I'm be that guy. You got a bunch of nerds. Look at these PERs and block rates and the wins, and look at his right hand efficiency going towards the elbow. All this is this, look at this. Look at these stuff. And for Luca, he's fat. He's fat. <laughs> no, but they go they go into some other stuff. They really only give SGA a little bit, and they give Luca the whole thing. 
SGA has one bad game versus the Lakers. Man, it, it, it's pretty nasty. Uh, even with uh this season, Tyrese and Luca was becoming a thing slowly but surely. Um, and then to to stay with Luca and not make it like a Luca is Luca's the victim thing. How did Luca get over to many fans? He's better than Harden. It wasn't even that he's amazing. And let's talk about Luca. He was just frank. He's just better he's than better Harden. Than really. Harden. Yeah. The Max, the Maxi, Trey Young, the Tyrese Halliburton, Trey Young. Yep. Uh, they've been trying to eat the Devin Booker. So it, we can't even have Anthony Edwards is getting thrown in here. We can't even have a, a, a good positive discord, appreciative discourse without diminishing players today. And I think it was Eli who said this. I was in the space was like. Every year we get an underground player um, and the underground kids because it's so cool. It's like like in Playboy Cardi. Oh, I like this guy. I like this guy, man. He's great. He's great. And the next year is a slander fest. And y- y'all know who it's going to be next year? Next year? Nah, SGA. SG, it's, it's SGA. Wimby? Tyler no, Halliburton? Nope. Oh, in terms of Paolo? being It's not Paolo. K Cunningham? No. He ain't going to be on the Hello? clock. Hey, Se- Lamella, you said Lamella? No. J- J- Dub? No, K Cunningham is, and J Dub might be one of them. I ain't gonna lie. K <laughs> Cunningham, Cunningham is one of the is, is the same division. Same division. Mm, mm, K mm. Cunningham. NBA divisions. NBA divisions. Zach NBA Levine. Kobe, Kobe White. There it is. Kobe yeah. White is the next one. Kobe White. What, what they was calling Kobe White this year? Oh my God, he's a new Steph Curry. Now, why would you do that? <laughs> now, what? And, and tell me y'all. I think Donald's seen at least some of them. Oh, too. Niggas been saying that about Kobe White crazy. Now next year, all the nerds is gonna come out, and instead of talking about whatever the pilot, whatever, it's gonna be slanderous towards Kobe White. We can't get away from it. That's that's where the, that's where young people lie in this conversation. I will say that. And that's why I think ultimately, um, when when I originally asked my question, so I think full circle. If we are not counting just educating the youth primarily on the the history then it's definitely the young niggas that throw the first punch because discourse for whatever reason has to has to say okay i think this guy's great in fact he's better than blank and it's just like what the fuck <laughs> it's, just, it's always just like like why did you do that bro i think i think it's just destined to be that way and old niggas even if said respectfully will always be taken disrespectfully being said shit like this there this is not respectful at all it's just irresponsible mm. <laughs> But I feel like when it comes to sports, there is no, at least in a sports where debates and conversations will happen with the likes of people that will start doing rankings and you're doing listings and it's a clear one, two, three, four in terms of standings, whatever it is. You're going to have the, yo, I love my homes. There's no one touching them. I can't believe you compare Josh Allen's arm to Mahomes' arm. Well, not Mahomes' arm. I'm think I, I guess Mahomes would be a bad case. But there's always going to be a case of Lamar Jackson is great. I can't believe you niggas would really consider Josh Allen over Lamar Jackson. Josh Allen is great. I can't believe you niggas would consider Lamar Jackson over Josh Allen or whatever the case is. Hey, man, Tatis is amazing. I can't believe you niggas would rather prefer Ronald Acuna than Tatis. Oh, my God. Shohei is amazing. I can't believe you niggas would cons- – like, that's always going to be a thing in terms of sports debate. Like, that's yeah. – I, I get it. It might be disingenuous. It might be fucked up. It might be brain dead or whatever. But in terms of everybody currently playing together, yes, I understand the can, – can motherfuckers just coexist? Yeah, everybody can coexist. And still we talking about who – and if you want everybody to coexist, you can't ask who's the best. You can't ask who's the best player. You can't ask who's the best big man. You can't ask who's the best whatever it is if you want everybody to coexist and just be great together. And everybody's the best. Everybody's great. And if we get in the participation trophy era, hey, man, sign me the fuck up for unk hats and unk shorts. That's <laughs> I'm telling you. I am not about to agree with an era of niggas just, I mean, Luca and Devin Booker are just amazing guys. They're great. We don't know who better? No, nah, man. I don't dis- we don't got to discredit anyone to uplift anyone else. It's just thin. I feel like it's a thin line between discrediting people to uplift people and pointing out the differences in someone's game to determine who's the best or to conclude with who's the best. Yeah. I do feel like there's a difference there. And I do feel like there's a, a whole lot of people, depending on where you have these conversations, that have an issue with not being able to just tell you the facts and go from there. They have to bring a nigga down. They have to be biased. They have to be one-sided. They have to be picky and choosy with what clips they show. They have to 
the cherry pick certain clips to make the argument. They just it's a form of a bias. That's why I always announce my biases. That was a new thing I picked up like last year. I said, fuck it. I'm gonna just tell niggas I'm biased before we go into this. Because then you already know, like, okay, you're just leaning that way. I'm not gonna convince you. You're not just that's what you believe, cool. And most of the time, niggas leave me the fuck alone about it. It changes discourse in basketball. I swear it does. Yeah, and, and I'll even uh, say, and if I've been talking too much segment, let me know, but I'll even say that it's not just a sports thing. It's really anything outside of, like, social constructs. So, like, even in the anime community, for example, when I'm debating a lot of times with my uh, chat or anything, they'll always try to diminish either me as a human or try to diminish what I'm saying versus bringing up their point. And I've always been like, okay, you know what? Fuck it. You're right. Can you explain why you're right? Or is it just you trying to prove how I'm wrong? And I feel like and when we're relating that to the NBA things, that's what kind of happens. It's not trying to show me why Kobe White is Curry. It, it's more so at some point, Curry not eating all that for real. And like, you know, at some point, that's where it goes. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Fine, 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 fine. Fuck it. He, Kobe White is better. Now show me that, and we'll and we'll go for from there. That's not acted upon. It's uh, uh, and that's just argument one on one nowadays. Everybody's trying to get gotchas and debunk everybody versus at least proving themselves uh, right or affirming their own argument. Nobody really does that anymore. I also think there's an incentive to compare more nowadays compared to other eras. Like I mean. You host the sports podcast ourselves. I said, not act like we don't do rankings ourselves and oh, things sure of that do. nature. Um, but yeah, I, I think in past decades, I don't think it was this bad. Um, I don't know. It just, it just gets nasty when I see like uh, the Jalen Brunson uh, first option conversations uh, as a championship dude. And I'm just like, Bro, he's having a great season. He's having a phenomenal season. We could have just left it at that. Yeah, why we got to right? put him in a convo where he... Yeah, now, yeah. We now, now we got to bring... Man, he's short. He's not that guy. Uh, he he doesn't have what it takes for X, Y, and Z reasons. He's trash defensively, whatever. We could have just left it at... Yo, Jalen Brunson and the Knicks having a phenomenal season. But like what Damo said, man, I mean, yeah, we, we do rankings, man, you know? It, it, it is a thin line. It is a very thin line. Oh, no, I like to I'm participate a, on both sides of the line. So. Oh, yeah. Not, not only that, I'm with Damo in the sense he didn't say it. No, it'd be soft as fuck if niggas were sitting there never saying they'd compare again or anything like that. It's sports is, at the end of the day, is going to be a little bit uh, remotely toxic because people view sports as a break from their normal life. So certain rules don't apply and shit. So And that's going to be one of the rules. However, um, people, again, just like when, when we're comparing players and stuff, Again, it's just a matter of how, okay, let me show you how bad X guy truly is versus how good my guy truly is. And it's just, ah, it gets love. It goes I feel low. like, so I feel like for what you brought up in terms of the Jalen Brunson thing, I mean, you're right. Yeah. Why, I mean, hey, we can just say he's having a great season and leave it at that. But what about the motherfucker that asks the impeding question? How far can they go with him being the best player? Because what does it mean for the Knicks to be back? Oh, they're back to what? The playoffs? Knicks fans don't want that. Any team that want that a uh, 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 blood-rooted basketball team, they think higher goals. What does the Knicks being back mean? If Knicks is asking, are the Knicks back? Is he the guy to lead the Knicks? Then you're going to have to get down to, well, the nigga is six feet tall. Like, hey, we got we got to start breaking it down know, if that's the question yeah. being asked. I, I feel like there's I, I'm, um, I'm not saying that. Though. I feel like it's absolutely fine acknowledging someone having a great season, but niggas get the asking questions. Whether you want to take them questions seriously or not, whatever. And if we want to kill the nigga for asking the question, that's cool. But at the end of the day, if ain't nobody asking questions, then where we at? Niggas is just sitting around accepting shit all goddamn day. Sign nah. me up for my own cat. I'm here, 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 I'm, here I'm saying, Domo, like, for example, for example, let's 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 take a different player, right? An easy player to do this with. Say like Victor Wimayama, right? We're noticing bros nice, like. Who the fuck don't think that, like, we're, bro to, we're noticing bro's nice. Now, a, a question that is, like, cool, for example, is he top 30? A cooler question, more debatable question, is he top 20? Damo, my thing with, like, the Jalen Brunson thing, for example, is there some asshole that's going to sit there, yo, is Vic top five? And it's like, now, why do I have to sit here and tell you that he's not top five? You know he's not top five. I know he's not top five. But now we're going to have this crazy conversation for those small group of contrarians and everybody else. Now, now essentially, niggas don't like Vic no more. And then now we're in a cycle of he's overrated, then underrated, then overrated. It's kind of like that to me. The, 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 legitimate, the legitimate conversation that's going to have about Victor post this season is where do you rank this season against 
um, other rookie seasons or whatever the case may be, and of course placement in the league. And it's going to be taken by too far when somebody says in the rookie conversation, well, I already think he's better than LeBron at his oh, peak. Yeah. Fuck his rookie season, his peak. It's like, all right, bro. I, yeah. I, yes. At this point, I actually take back my answer from earlier. I think it is the. That's what I'm saying. It's, 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 it's literally. Because it's, oh, it's, always, it's always the new guys overhyping someone and someone having to say, wait, hold on now. Let's. Taking a dial back, but, but and it, now I have to apply the criticism. But Unk amp it, and that, that that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unk amps the fuck out of it. Like, like at the end of the day, Dom, what Damo's saying, this isn't a uh, uh, pick a side, Sage. Uh, you disagree with Damo? No, I actually don't disagree with Damo because he's right. We never ask questions to be a thing, but it's one thing to ask a question. Yo, who is better, James Harden or Kobe? It's another for a motherfucker to go. Oh, see, here y'all go, man. James Harden wouldn't even last with Clyde Drexler. It's like, ah. Right. <laughs> but, God damn, bro. But I would say for the guy that's asking the question, for the guy that's asking the question, the conversation of a hey, where does Wimby rank? And you have that, I mean, we can call him an asshole, whoever that says, is he top five? I mean, he might genuinely think a seven four nigga with the ability to step back, impede everything on defense is a top five player. And my thing is, we got to separate the differences between people who genuinely think that because of what they see, what they know, and actually can form that argument versus the niggas is just saying that. Because for whatever reason, niggas like to be contrarians for attention. Like, we have to cipher the difference between that. Because I'm not going to get mad. That's like getting mad at Kai and Anthony for thinking Paul George is his GOAT. Or getting mad at Brandon Miller for thinking Paul George is his GOAT. Like, all right, nigga, Paul George really the greatest player to you? But if Brandon Miller looks at Paul George's game, it's like 6'9", do it on both ends, hit anywhere from the floor, handle like a guard, and guard up anybody? Nigga, that sounds like the great. That sounds like my 2K player that I grew up making. So to him, it makes perfect sense. It's reasonable. You might disagree with it, but that's reasonable. But a nigga saying, yeah, Paul George is the GOAT, that nigga hairline crispy. That's the nigga we need to talk about <laughs> removing and exiling from conversations. That shit's pointless. Me, I think to, to find the line, I think to find the line, you do have to go over it. That, that's that's my last point. Like, you, you do not know what that line is until someone does OD and you say, wait, hold on, this is where he belongs. So, fair point, fair point. I think, I think with Dom, no, I was just going to say that that's exactly where uh, I I believe. Like I expect my little ten year old cousin to come up and say, "Oh, Wimby's the greatest player in the world. He's he's the greatest player ever." Me, you know what? You're right. You want the Wimby shoes? Let's go get them, dog. Let's let's go get your Wimbert shirt and let you rock out, man. Cause I I want you to be as delusional as I was as far as fandom goes. I want you to get that, and then you know we'll we'll meet somewhere in the middle once you start looking into basketball more or whatever. But at ten, you know, as a youth. I expect you to say some shit. Oh, uh, uh, Wimby, Wimby would just dunk on MJ, or he would just guard MJ on the perimeter. He's just he could do it all. Me, you're right, dog. I agree. I agree. <laughs> he hey, is I a little you're kid. Right. Now I, I said I trolled a little kid, but he right. he's right. Seven four. The, 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 the backyard against is the best show. You're right, dog. Uh, you, you're right. I agree. Oh. Team times go <laughs> clears. Oh. I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't gonna lie to you. And then alive before I have my uncle on me. Over the original me. You're right, man. I like that. I but have, the live action, actually. Oh, shit. <laughs> I have argued with my little cousin about Teen Titans versus Teen Titans Go. I have done it. I ain't going. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to like I have it. I'm not going to act like I have it. I have sat there. My girl, what are you doing? Nah, he going to learn. He's going to learn today. There's no way we're taking. Yeah, I've done that. So, I'm, I'm yeah. I, yeah. No, nah, I, I literally had the debate, too, Dom. I was like, you understand Teen Titans had a theme, right? Because, <laughs> nephew, theme? What do you mean? It's just like a dance jump. Ah. Oh, yeah, let me put that real shit on. Had an unk moment like hell the other day. I, I will say this, man. I, I, uh, I spent some time this weekend watching full 90s games, man. I'm going to say this, man. The, the one percenters still stand out. MJ stood out. Hakeem stood out. Oh, uh, yeah. Clyde Drexler stood out. But the role players, boy, them role players are ass, bro. Oh, my God. You're going to stand out if you're playing. I said that. If you're playing kindergartners, you're going to look great. Oh, man. Man, we de- we're done with oh, oh man, that's how the clip's ending. Oh, yeah. Thursday, we're gonna put a, a total into it. Um, last basketball thing that I got, um, don't even got to be a long moment, you might not even have to have anything off the top of your head. I was on somewhere, or maybe I was just driving and I thought about this. There is no more impactful moment in the history of basketball than this moment right here. You know, there's a weird way you can debate that. I, I would so, want to know if y'all so had a more impactful, mind you, singular moment too. 
This shot changed everything from my perspective. This shot did it all. And somebody tried to argue me about play style and, and the play style changed based off of the Spurs and the heat and all that stuff. It's this shot. This shot sent so many ripples that now we have uh, an alien in the league. A single moment, like a very single, single moment. Yeah. It could and be like I'll, a whole game. And let me say, let me say for audio listeners, that was uh, Stephen Curry's, I think it was 2016, shot uh, OKC, the game winner, the one from the R in the logo. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you want to do a game, that's fine. We should, we should game be so. Hmm. I'm trying to. Oh, go, oh you uh, 20, 2012 game six versus the, the Celtics. When LeBron finally figured that shit out. No turning back, man, for a whole last generation. I don't know. We was done with the 90s by then, right? At that point? So, yeah. <laughs> it's starting to it's starting to trickle down. Um, Damo, you got one. In terms of how it how you're framing it, I would say you're absolutely right. If we're talking about the things that inevitably happen because this shot, the the style, everything like that, the only thing I could think of honestly, I have. Uh, one. Oh, I my only one in my opinion would be the Kawhi shot against Philly, the the triple bounce. Mm-hmm. I just what feel like I feel like had that not went in, Philly's going to the chip. Philly's going to win. I don't think we a ton of Embiid. The perception on Embiid, Ben Simmons is way different. Jimmy Butler probably doesn't get traded, so he's not going to go to Miami for the 2020s. He's probably going to stay in Philly. That team could actually contend and compete with the Warriors team coming forward. Well, not even coming forward because they dissembled after that, but they could have actually competed going forward a lot, and a lot of just other changes doesn't happen. Uh, Other teams aren't formed. Other narratives are happening. So there is no – I doubt Ben Simmons is throwing the pass when Trey Young's on him. Because Jimmy's gonna have the ball. Like I don't think a lot of things, a, a lot of things happen differently, in my opinion, in terms of style of play in the NBA. Mm. Wasn't it tied though when Kawhi hit that shot or took that shot? I thought they were down. Or I thought I thought they were, down. were they tied? Even if they were tied, I mean, go to overtime. I yeah, felt yeah, like Philly yeah, won that. Okay. Yeah, I, I feel like winning that. There goes overtime. Okay. The shot took the game. The shot took the game to OT. Okay, so then yeah, he misses it. They don't go to OT. Or Spaghetti doesn't act- know. Spaghetti doesn't. Oh my god, niggas is <laughs> It wasn't tied. I'm looking at it right now. Ninety. I think it was like 89, okay. 89 right? It was a tie. If it goes, if it goes to OT, I definitely got Philly winning. Okay, Sage, so you got. So a- yeah, are we? Go- so question is. Uh, changing like a domino effect of changing multiple things in the NBA, or changing like is this like an influence conversation? I'm, I'm, it, it honestly, my shot encompasses both. This just mm. has the most impact on basketball history, in my opinion. Just oh, basketball history. Okay. Um, I would say <laughs> we done with the 90s. This is close to the 90s. I'm not gonna lie, the push off is the push off does like get a lot of things in motion because once Jordan really had a clear cut goat argument, shit guilt shit got out of hand. Shit shit did get out of hand. First of all, the name Michael Jordan carried a lot, a lot, a lot more weight than the idea of what you want to build around to when a championship changed. Yes, some people were trying to imitate wings, but it wasn't really a thing until niggas were sitting there like. Yeah, he's better than all these bigs in history. Then, obviously, that introduces a player archetype like LeBron James, where what if it's a bigger guy that can do the guard shit that um, Michael Jordan could do? And then also has the moxie that Michael Jordan could do. Speaking of moxie and Michael Jordan's mentality, that's another thing that's um, instilled in the hearts of, in minds of, like, Kobe Bryant. And now everybody, all Kobe did was name the shit. Now, now Mamba mentality is in uh, this next generation of things. So I would say Michael Jordan's push-off, uh, giving himself a clear cut memory as to why we consider him the GOAT is something that um, I would say is definitely giving that bump. But in terms of uh, impact, that's honestly, that's why I said you could really argue it because that's not even a bad take. Um, now, in terms of, uh, in terms of like domino effects of just shit changing just because, uh, I ain't gonna lie, 
I think the easy two for me, and maybe this is me being biased as a potential Lakers fan or just what LeBron could impact. One is uh, the Celtics in 08. Kobe has a three-peat. Shit gets out of hand again. <laughs> Kobe gets a second three-peat. I mean, Kobe gets a three-peat essentially is next-gen MJ. Oh, my Lord. Shit's out of hand. And then um, definitely LeBron not making the finals before um, – or never playing Kobe. Sorry. If we ever had LeBron play Kobe, shit would have got, got crazy. But I don't know what that moment would be. I guess like Dwight's block or some shit. <laughs> I don't fucking know what that moment would be. Y'all yeah, think the Lakers beating the Cavs back then would change a lot of conversations? You said what? Like, like, would it actually change conversations? If Lakers beat Cavs? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it is way, way higher. Great, crazy domino, dog. One, that's why I'm literally higher. saying. Oh, no, I'm, I'm talking about, like, uh, not on some shit that the general public will believe. I, I'm talking about for y'all. Would, you, would your perceptions of those two players change? Your if Kobe got a dub on LeBron, yeah. I ain't gonna lie. It'd yeah. be like, yeah. I was a big Bron hater back in the day, so absolutely, I feel like that would have <laughs> ended the debate. And growing up and understanding the game, I still think I would have had remnants of, yeah, Bron's my goat. But I watched that nigga Kobe take his heart. I yeah. said, like, I yeah, that's how I saying, bro. Like, like yeah. to add on to that, yeah, I would sit there, 2009, 2010, 2011, and especially in 2012. I said they're like, he might be better. But I ain't picking them if they play each other. <laughs> he might be better. You know what? Fine. In 2009, 2010, Kobe better. 2011, Kobe's way better. The frozen one. So, so, so follow-up question. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. 2012, I'm sitting there like, okay, LeBron might fuck with him. But if they play each other. And so, yeah. But go ahead. Ask your question. Uh, follow-up question. Would the Lakers have beaten the Cavs if they faced off? Yeah, I think that that's Absolutely. the that that's that's the unfair part about it. Hmm. Yeah, the Lakers were the Lakers were supposed to stomp the Cavs. You want Booby Gibson <laughs> the, 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 the Lakers were supposed Kobe. to stomp the Cavs. What? It's unfair, but so true. the only reason Kobe ain't better than LeBron is because LeBron lost, lost before meeting Kobe. That's how mm. the NBA Finals and logic works. Because the only yeah. reason LeBron's not a like goat it. to some people is that he's four and six. But um, it's almost like he made the finals ten times. The only, thing goes, that, the only thing that might have saved it is if all right, he loses to Kobe, but then he beats Kyrie, not Kyrie, Steph, Katie, right, uh, Clay, Draymond. If they win, mm. especially if they win after Kyrie leaves. Oh my god, I don't know. Yeah, if that nigga wins in 2018, oh my I'm lord, there's yeah. nothing in the history of basketball that could have happened to make me not say Braun was number one. I'm yeah, sorry, yeah, Braun, Braun would have been, been my crazy. goal overnight. I mean, literally, he would have been if he wasn't already, he'd have been my goal overnight. But to add on to that, that would have uh given LeBron uh fans an easy argument that well, Kobe beat before prime LeBron. This is prime LeBron, prime LeBron did this, GG's. So, because also, what he would what he would have had to do in order to do that. He might have had to average like close to fifty points, close to twenty assists, and close to twenty rebounds. And nigga was putting up. He had to put up wilt numbers, literally. So he would have Actually, to beat those Warriors to be over Kobe in this hypothetical. In this, in this, in this hypothetical, yeah. Because once you lose yeah. to, once you lose to the goat, like you know how uh, we had that football segment a while back about Mahomes. Yeah. Fun fact for you, if you don't know, Ma Brady beat Mahomes. No, dude. Twice, technically I twice, but that that offside one was nasty. But he he beat Mahomes. I'm actually both were kind of nasty, but def either way, he's beating Mahomes. So what Mahomes has to do is like generational shit for a lot of people. And the scary part is he's doing it, but that's what he I'm saying. He has, to, he has to do generational shit because people will always be able to say no matter what happens, yo, lost he, lost the, twice. he lost to Brady twice. Like literally he has to do something no one's ever seen. And Which, he's doing. <laughs> he's on path. He's literally on the path it's, it's of great. doing something we've never seen. Speaking of football, Omar, Kirk Cousins, how you feeling? Yeah, I was. I was. That was my way of being nasty and sneaking in a thirty-second football. I'm so not the one to talk crazy. to because I don't give a fuck. I heard uh, Russell Wilson got. Uh, That's the real conversation, Sage. How do you feel? Steelers. I knew that. Steelers <laughs> Nation, what's well, baby? What's up, man? How you doing? You know what I find funny. Y'all, oh. outside of y'all, you know what else I found funny? We had a podcast where I sat here and defended Russell Wilson, talked about Russell Wilson, and mm -hmm. now I got to sit here and have washed 
version of him on my team. That is crazy. So before y'all start going, because I know how some of you niggas are going to be, oh, this was the quarterback? No, this is not the quarterback. He's fucking 40. <laughs> this is not the same guy. But um, in terms of outside of keep it a bug lore, uh, the Steelers don't sign multiple people. So this is going to be the one person we sign, and it's annoying. Just like of all the things, a mm-hmm. micro upgrade from Kenny Pickett. All right, bro. He's an upgrade, Bezos. though. Bezos. Patriots traded Mac Jones, man. How you feel about that? Uh, we got Jacoby Brissett today, so I feel good oh, my. about my former team. I am now a Chiefs fan. I told you this, man. Oh, you're a Chiefs fan. All right. I told you this. My Chiefs. Your Chiefs. They're losing next year just because he said yeah, that. Yeah, it's over with. Yeah, Chad, it's okay, Chad's good. He, he cursed my, okay, he cursed my Mahomes run. So no more. Oh, no feelings at all on Kirk Cousins. You don't like it? <laughs> You lucky you ain't signed like nobody yet. No more. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait for y'all. We, did. we got Johnu. We got Johnu Smith. Oh, y'all got John Johnu Smith. You know, he cool. I guess. Yeah, we need a tight end. Oh, we not signed nobody. I ain't gonna lie. It's yeah, been a I very guess. dark day for Dolphin fans. We lost everybody. We lost Brandon Jones. We lost Christian Wilkes. We lost Van Gyke. We lost everybody. They saying Google, we might get we uh everybody. Simmons. They might. They saying we might get Simmons. Let me be clear. I will laugh to the bank we, oh, if we have if we have Justin Simmons and Minka. I will laugh to the bank, but. I don't give a fuck. We ain't got no receivers. We ain't got no quarterback. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, just real quick. Fuck all Eagle fans. I don't give a fuck about none of you niggas. Yeah, hold on. I hope all y'all, I they all y'all are died. I hope literally all y'all tires get slashed <laughs> by a random hobo. I hope when you walk to the bathroom at night, you stub your toe in the corner. I hope ah. I hope the milk you buy is spoiled. I hope you get some cereal and there's rocks in it, nigga. The fridge Ooh, left I open. Hope the fridge left open. I, it's just passion. Look, we're gonna move on because I don't want to drag it. I'll talk football on my stream, but I wanted that nigga to go to the Texans so bad, bro. Stroud, Stroud, tank is I hope when you, re-zip. you re-zip after you use the bathroom, you get a little bit of nutsack, a little bit, just a little bit of nutsack. That's what I hope, buddy. It is what it is. We'll talk for more football on my uh, platform chat, but I saw y'all typing it away. So there be uh, so. And that was not my hot take. Don't worry. Oh, my hot take. Um, I'm not gonna lie, bro. If y'all don't like me, just say that, man. I, I'm not, and that goes for anyone up here. I am just tired of people masking their hate for certain people through other avenues. If you do not like someone, just say you do not like them, bro. It is as simple as that. The reason why this is my hot take is because um, on Instagram today, yes. um, yep. I posted I posted the IG reel about Allen Iverson. Talking about uh, what you gonna call it, not having a left hand, and uh, boy, motherfuckers got personal hella quick, hella hella quick, and I'm just like, how are you mad for me for something that came out of his mouth? And even in the same video, by the end of it, I still defended Allen Iverson to a certain extent. So um, yeah, like I said, bro, if you just don't like the way that I look or don't like the way that I sound or whatever the fuck your problem is, just say that. Don't use basketball as a mask to justify what you want to say. Don't use these other topics or whatever avenue you want the podcast as a mask to say you you don't you don't like me or whatever. If you don't like me, just say that, bro. Just say it. And let me and let me hop in here. If you shape like Mariah Mills, you don't have space to speak. We done with the BBLs. Oh. We done with you, Mariah Mills, built bitches. Um, you shaped like a bone from from a cartoon show. Okay, I, I don't want to hear or see nothing of you. I got disgusted with you, wisdom tooth shape ass bitches. That's 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 coming from my man's. Um, you look like a beanbag chair that somebody just threw in the corner. I'm not I'm not going for that. I'm not going for that. You built wrong from the feet to the thighs to the hips to the to the to the chest to the stomach to the face. You ain't built right nowhere. You should have got a refund. Okay. Charge it back on the care credit. Um, because you shape bad as hell. Shit is insane. You think I'm you you think you could just why you think you have room to talk? Why? It wasn't just her, by the way. There's multiple people. I don't give a fuck about IG. everybody else. Fuck them. The BBL bitch. I swear to you, I had no idea what y'all was talking about. 
I don't get on Instagram like that. I just look as he says, you bad built BBL, and I clicked her name. I was like, oh my God, this is what we're talking about. Ah, this is crazy. Oh, that's wild, bro. She like yeah. Mariah Mills, ain't it? This is hard. Oh, you went. Oh, you went smack at her. Hold on, bro. Let me let me walk in. Mariah Mills shake that. Oh yeah, Omar, I, Omar I ain't is not joking. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 because no, I, 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 I seen I seen your first post. So I ain't see I ain't been on Instagram since. Oh, let me. Mariah okay. Mills shape ass. And, and, and so I think somebody sent the anthem. Also, y'all attention spans are fucked, bro. The fact that y'all can't even finish a 60 second video before you get y'all shit off, bro. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Literally, all of the criticism that y'all have for the video, unless again, you just want to get your shit off on me, you don't like me. Yeah, she's literally like answered by the end of the video, bro. I'll That's be it. blunt, souls. Yeah, she just ain't like your face, bro. I can look yeah. at her and tell her she just ain't like your face, bro. She just she just one of those, bro. She don't like she don't like his face, but she like her face after the doctor did what he did. <laughs> call 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 HIPAA. Call the board. Okay. Nah, I ain't gonna lie, you came from my dog kind of crazy, Shorty. You gotta hold that. Your legs holding a lot of Jelly. I know that's right. You can hold it. <laughs> oh, no, you got you can hold some more. Yeah, man. I ain't gonna, oh, I ain't gonna lie, it. you can hold some more, bro. Shit. Damn. Anyways, uh, say. That's all I gotta say, bro. All right, man. So my hot take really ain't a take because it was more of a stupid talking point. I knew it was a slow day. So um, my my hot topic of the day is uh, and chat can partake as the judges if we're ever wilding. But I just one of you guys started off a stupid nigga topic, but we were talking about it. What is the strongest animal? We in a we in a room. We having a meeting. Bam! Animal come through the window. What's the strongest animal you think us four can solo without anybody dying? Us four? So four of us versus this one animal. Four of us versus without this one animal. Any of us dying? Without anyone dying. We could be fucked up. Anybody dying. Mm. Not a gorilla. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, unless y'all think we can kill a gorilla. No. A snake? I think okay. we can kill a snake. We can kill a snake. We can a snake. Kill a snake. We, if we can't kill a snake and there's four of us, we got a problem. Technically. Uh, technically. Wild war? Technically. Mm. I don't know. Technically, an ant. Uh, if we're talking about relative strength, oh, but an ant, well, actually, an ant is relatively more stronger than any animal you can name. So, I ain't gonna um, lie. I'll start it off. I think we could kill like a lower tier wild dog, like like a coyote, a wolf, low tier, like a low tier, lower like, tier wild like, dog. Like, like you know what I'm saying? Like like <laughs> not, not power scaling like dogs, a, bro. And, and I know some of them might, might, might be cats, but like not like a wild ass uh a jaguar, a bengal. Oh no, we were dying. <laughs> but, but like you know what I'm saying? But like, Michael like, Michael Sage is crazy right now. <laughs> Sage Vic. Uh, I do also think we could kill a, a whale. Oh, whale. Be, yeah, if a oh, whale, whale's gonna be fighting back, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, also if especially a whale, on land. Oh, if a whale came in. Come on, dog. We just gotta wait it out. A good. <laughs> how long you think it takes? Oh, what, what kind of room do y'all think we in? He didn't specify, hey, so I can not, imagine whatever room. Like, I want. we outside, and we we in Florida because all this just spawn in there. We outside in Florida, bro. Boom. Honestly, the honestly, get his ass. Okay. Speaking of Florida, we can take a gator. Oh, we can take a gator. Oh, if Chad don't think we can take a gator, niggas bugging. I ain't gonna lie. I might want to be one that nigga. The fuck? Like, what's up? Fuck it. I'll take it. I'll take it a bit further. And because I've seen this dialogue with this group of niggas who don't got no faith in their hands, I think we take a mountain lion. Four v one. I think we four v one. Okay, okay. Game plan me. Game plan me. Game plan me. Four v one. All right, all right. right. Four v one. Talk to me. This about look, look, look. If it's about none of us dying, I'm gonna have to be realistic. The Mm -hmm. only way I see this happening, if a mountain lion. Jumps in. Oh, we can't be off say, guard. We can't be off guard. Yeah. Exactly. Listen, it jumps in. It's in the middle. It's about to attack. I would say somebody needs to nut up and be the initial yeah. nigga to jump at it to get its attention. I attack mm-hmm. it from behind. Wild tackle. Get it from yeah. behind. And at that point, is literally everyone in unison has to stomp. Punch thing and fuck that little nigga up. Eyes, nigga, I fight like a bitch. <laughs> I just need somebody to take. I'll be the first guy, man. Cause I y'all stop to go hit harder than mine. Hit the thing. So, 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 so. Here's one thing. You have to engage, but whatever you don't let that nigga bite your neck. You yeah. dying on impact. You You're dying on impact, bro. <laughs> nigga, if that thing bites you anywhere up here, somebody, oh, yeah, somebody has to genuinely. So, so said he gonna do it. Someone has to take the first little, that first little brunt force. And I got it going to rebound, and I'm 
All, every ounce of strength I got, I'm holding that nigga by the throat in a mm. guillotine, body triangle wise, trying to claw me. I'm doing everything I got to do. You niggas got to fuck that little nigga up immediately. That's the only way I see it happening. Oh, yeah, I ain't going to lie. If I if I can get just free shots, I ain't going to lie. Unless chat thinks I'm a weak bitch. At, the, at that point, it's not fighting back. I can just attack the cranium and the eyes. Oh, yeah, that nigga. I mean, they going to meet the woo. Now, the question is, how long can you hold on? Because that motherfucker ain't just got to bite. You got claws, nigga. I said, you got claws, nigga. And I ain't think about that. You got yeah, claws. I was about to say, you, you're getting pierced. Uh, That's what I'm saying. Dead. Like I would say, I would say for a, a nigga like me of my stature... I'll take it as long as I can for you guys, man. Hey, I, yo, I what do what the... I gotta do for my guys to survive, man. As long as my guys make it out, as long Wait, as I'm, what? as long as I'm not a vegetable. No, you know, I'm... Thirty seconds. Like I death. agree. Yeah, someone it's said like no death. diff. I think that there's something to what Damo's saying, but we gotta act fast. If anybody hesitates, oh, Damo's dead for yeah, no that's what I'm saying. reason. There's only Damo's one way this happens, and no it has reason, to be. Bro. It has to be on go at the same yeah, time. It's on and go. This has to be a small amount line. I'm not saying a full, full grown, <laughs> grown man mountain oh, line. Oh yeah, 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 let me see how big mountain lines are. But you, but you know you can't say what you just said though, right? I don't know what you're talking about. We're moving past that because we're adults <laughs> and we don't say no goofy ass kid shit. Remember, remember? And so, oh, oh Donald, I, you might be good though. You might be able to like look, 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 look. If this motherfucker like lacking, ladies. if this motherfucker lacking, all I'm saying is if it's a girl, that motherfucker is 80, 90 pounds. I ain't gonna lie. Beating women? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> very, very much too. That's why I said very catch it off yeah, guard. We could beat like a. We, yeah, we could beat the down, children. Jump on it. Whatever I gotta do. At that point, I'm trying to. I'm getting my little jabs in, trying to choke it. I, I'm finger in the eye. The I can. Woman? Now, oh now the eight foot one fifty pound jumps. <laughs> They might give us a problem. Yeah, nah, that, that nigga. Yeah, he, that, that, that nigga might got it. That nigga might got it. Cause he just, cause no, even, even with you holding him, he too tall. He gonna scratch you. Yeah, too. nah, that's crazy. I can get it off. Uh, Damo. He's All right. So crazy right um, now. I'm gonna keep on short and sweet. Um, a lot of you niggas don't need internet no more. A lot of you niggas don't need internet. A lot of you niggas. The funniest. A lot of you niggas don't need. A lot of you niggas don't need internet no more. Y'all need to go to fuck outside, get a hobby, get a job, anything. Um, the Oscars. The Oscars were. Or Golden oh. Globe, whatever the fuck you want to call it. That was this past, whenever the fuck it was, because I don't watch this shit. And, you know, John Cena, who, new movie, Ricky Stanicki, which I end up seeing. Uh, one of those, if you're one of those people that are like, why don't... Yes, Ricky Stanicki. If you yeah. are one of those people that are like, hey, why don't they make those just classy, dumbass comedies? Those buddy comedies that are just funny. Like, just a just a cool movie. Just a funny movie. That is Step Brothers of- movie? A Step Brothers ass type of movie. That is one of them. It's not as good as Step Brothers, but it's just one of those comedies that's just, hey man, this is just dumb little funny buddy comedy. That right, shit's right. hilarious. I watched it last night. Ricky Snicky is fucking funny. Um, he was in it. Uh, and as you can see on the timeline, this man, MJ True Ultra, which dead giveaway, this nigga needs to go the fuck outside. Um, this is called the humiliation ritual. Cat Williams was right. Let me tell you something. This is why. As a country, we are not shit. This is why, as a people, we are not shit. This is why we are in situations and in a world where any and everything can just fucking happen to us because you dumb fucks are so caught in your own head in these deep-ass web of lies and fuckery on the internet that you think John Cena is going through a humiliation ritual for this movie. You niggas are dumb. You world you, champions of what? Like man, <laughs> <laughs> you niggas are dumb. Niggas are saying, "Oh, this is this Hollywood process." He went. I seen one person. He went from the Marine to dressing as a woman because he puts he does dress um, as a woman in the movie for one, the thing he does in the movie, whatever oh, wow. it is. But um, yeah, this is just humiliation ritual now, and they're putting it right in your face at the Oscars, and no one is saying anything. Or John Cena is just a super, super buff dude, and he is okay with his body. And how are you going to deem this a humiliation ritual if this nigga isn't humiliated? You don't think it was weird, though? No, I didn't think it was weird. It seems on brand for John Cena. I don't know if you've been keeping up with <laughs> new John Cena. John Cena has a fucking OnlyFans now. Like, I hope you... Oh, like, yeah, okay. I mean, if yeah. that's his brand, that's his Not name, that but... kind of OnlyFans. Apparently, it's pretty comedy, but... Yeah. Comedy fans? 
Yeah. Comedy fans. I don't know what's on. I just heard he had OnlyFans. I was like, yeah, oh, apparently it's where he does comedy. Yeah. I, I saw it live. It was weird to me. I ain't gonna lie. I don't know about humiliation ritual, but just seeing John Cena naked ass walking across the stage was kind of. It is weird. You can't think of anything else? Um, is it is also a humiliation kink ritual? Um, oh, fight. I agree. I just think the dude's a weird nigga. Right. Yeah, you, know, you could argue he's just on some like frat just, boy shit. I don't think anybody. He's just been weird for a long time, in my opinion. But I, I guess if you make the argument, I never forget the funniest thing that nigga John Cena did was when uh when when Lada met the Woo. And it was at some pay per view. Bro stood up, halted everything. <laughs> Osama bin Laden has been permanently. Like what the? What's like? Did this just stop the whole WWE event? The so Osama bin Laden has been captured and terminated permanently. <laughs> <laughs> So fucking funny, bro. But nah, I mean, overall, Adamo's right in the sense of it's on pace of what John Cena would do. Question, I guess, that if you gotta go there, go there. Do you think John Cena's a weird nigga or not? No, that's up to you. But is this something yes. that's off brand of John Cena? Nah, it's not. It's something I think, I think any professional wrestler has a bit of weird nigga to him. Not gonna lie to you. Gotta be a weird nigga to love that profession. Not gonna lie. So loyalty, respect out the window. <laughs> Um, let me get mine in. And so, and sometimes you can re- repeat hot takes of the week. They don't have to be new all the time. So I'm going to I'm going to repeat it. Um y'all don't like basketball. You don't like basketball. Um you know, not only has this weekend with the college tournament shown me that you don't like basketball, it is. It is also uh, again the the we done with the '90s conversation as well, and how I've just laid out how they go through um, other basketball conversations and discourse. Um, every moment, it's criticize, 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 criticize. It's nitpick, 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 nitpick. It's you know I'm gonna create some new terms to make this player look bad or do something salacious to only fit this person's narrative. It's it's all these things. And when you combine everything together, uh, to me, it just sounds like, man, you just don't find joy in a lot of things. Um, same thing with this weekend. We're, we're staring at this weekend for the women's game because of the fight, because uh, of the drama. And and not saying that that can't add to what's going on, but do we like basketball anymore or not? I thoroughly enjoyed watching how people played, schemed, scammed, the people that stepped up. Uh, I didn't talk about it, but Caitlin did have 34, but the girl who was guarding her, she had 21, I think she had 21 and 9, shot efficiently as well, and she was a freshman and was really, like, at it, and Caitlin Clark. I think she, no, I think she knew. She probably knew, um, what's it called? She probably knew that this was the last time she'd ever play her, and she wasn't going to let Caitlin Clark just dick her down. So this little freshman girl stepped up. Um... I've seen some people who cared about basketball this weekend play basketball. And even like I said, in, in another place, we even when I watched that middle school game, I saw them girls two minutes. It was about under two minutes into the fourth quarter. The little girl started crying on the court and playing at the same time. Through the tears, still playing. And I'm like, damn, it, it means something to them. But for a lot of people, it just don't. Yeah. What's the narrative and what's the nitpick that I can get off? So yeah, I just don't care about basketball. I'm not I'm not trying to convince nobody to watch nothing. Somebody I already can see somebody. Oh my, so condescending. I guess so. If you want to take it that way, I just know people. There's people out there that just genuinely don't like basketball that are in these conversations. Shit. Yeah. Um. I'm not gonna echo what I said last pod because hey, I want y'all to watch last pod. But long story short, that we want we done with the '90s thing for me was the nail in the coffin that y'all don't like basketball because you Loki imply for reason, as I said last pod, that you don't like any era of basketball at that point because there's criticisms of every era that have been echoed. Um, I would also say for me as well that um, I always say I'm an NBA fan because I know I'm trying to get into college basketball, but I don't watch it. I'm trying to get into women's basketball, but I don't watch it. And while I keep saying I'm going to try to get into these things, I watch like a game, then I don't watch the shit for like a month. So ultimately, maybe I'm just a fan of basketball at its highest uh, product 
and highest uh, potential talent. But then that would question, well, do you really like basketball or just the NBA? That answer is just the NBA. I'm mature enough to admit that. But when people say that they like basketball, but then can't even watch, hell, in, even in the NBA, can't watch a Magic game, can't watch the Pistons game, can't watch the Wizards play. I've seen the Wizards live. I ain't gonna lie. I'm thinking about going back to see them play. Granted, a star player. I can't do trash on trash. But I, I guess, like, I, I might go to the Wizards game when uh, the Lakers pull up. But, nah, the idea that, I'll like... i pull up with you. Well, actually... So to say, life. But uh, being said, but um, but nah, but nah. Point being, yeah, man. Some of y'all don't like basketball. Some of you guys just like high, high end um teams. And to be honest, I'm a, I'm gonna push to take a little bit further because thinking on it, I think some of y'all only like high end players. I don't think y'all give a fuck about anybody that ain't in the argument for being best player in the world, best scorer in the world, or best defender in the world. If it, if they're not in one of those three conversations. Or a mixture of all three conversations. I don't care about that motherfucker. Yeah. With that being said, um, close it out there, man. This is, this is been a good pie. It's been yeah. a great pie. Um, before we leave, though, um, I just want to shout out everyone who resubbed. Shout out to the Black Ranger, Bryce Mason for the gifted, Jalen for the resub, Bambino for the resub, uh, another Jalen for the three months, Spagatini for the resub, uh, tries for the resub. Dala for the Risa, Black Do Flamingo, Demi Beast, uh, Quan, let's see, Zero, uh, Andrew, Glow, uh, From Deep Like These, J Rod, Cornell. Damn, a lot of y'all resub today. That's Cardiac. Like yeah, he had a message with it. It says, Hey guys, first time chatter here. Just wanted to know what the next pivot is. Was wondering when you all would grow out of basketball. Ironic. <laughs> <laughs> Arsenal. With the resub, uh, Thick Glizzy Eater with the resub, Hugh Reform, uh, Gimme a Milk, Jimmer, CZ World, damn, and I think it ends there, and Rada just gifted a sub, I believe, though just resub just now, Maximus, and there you go, that should be it. Rada, Rada. Um, Damo, say goodbye to the people, man. All right, Chaz, being my favorite Monday snack, and we will be back Thursday on the pod. Tomorrow for my stream. Pull up to the stream tomorrow, man. I'm officially going to start using StreamYard when I'm streaming, too, so I can really go back with everybody. So another element of the, st of the streams to, you know, make everything better. Trying to be a better creator. Okay. Damo, the creator. Um, say, say goodbye to the people. All right, people. Uh, might go live tonight. Might might not, because I ain't going to lie. I've been recording all fucking day, working on that Toriyama vid. But not even the Toriyama vid at this point. It's just an appreciation for Dragon Ball. Working on that video. I want to make sure everything is perfect. Um, also got a lot of rec uh, recordings to do as well, whether it's podcast, SNS related. So if I don't stream, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not dead on stream. But we might really stream tonight. And it might be dumb late, like really late. Like you should not be there. <laughs> but if you want to be awake at fucking three in the morning, hey, hey, you'll see me then, man. Take care. Stay blessed. I'll, you'll know if I go live. It's literally if I'm bored and can't sleep. Okay. Be so sick. Uh, peace out, y'all. Appreciate y'all for coming through. Follow the TikTok. Great weekend for me on TikTok, man. You see what I'm saying? Um, I'm going to be streaming tomorrow. We're going to be playing The Quarry. We we uh, played like the first 20 minutes of it. That shit is a lit-ass game. We're going to play a lot of it tomorrow. I'm on my story mode horror game arc on, on stream and other reactions as well. So tune into my stream tomorrow, man. Okay. Um, chat, we will see you guys tomorrow on Playback Wednesday on Playback and Thursday. You don't want to be late. We are officially going to figure out, are we done with the 90s or not? We have a great debate going on, so I would not yes. miss you. Uh, but until next time, bye, guys. And I'm not pussy for a gator. I saw some of y'all saying, man, fuck that bitch-ass gator. Look, weak-ass crop. I'm hitting that nigga with the burn it down curb stomp. I am not scared of no gator. Ah.